Hello, gamers. It me. Maybe I make this a little bit bigger. Chat box can go like this big. <laughs> Look how it's good. It's giant. Hi everyone. How you doing? Thank you. Guy next. 2K1. Thank you, the Underlaker. Scooterman Gaming. 21 months. Look at us go. Uh, CS came about. Thank you. I did have a wonderful time in Australia. Captain Dreg. <laughs> Welcome, Jinsei House. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, right. Welcome, everybody. Hi. How y'all doing? Hi, hi, hi. Yeah, I didn't, uh, I thought that I would stream when I was in Australia, but then I did not end up wanting to because family time just ended up being like, that's nuts. I, why would I do that? So I didn't. <laughs> Thank you, stream with luck. Yeah, I almost never share on Twitter uh, anything to do with Twitch or YouTube, to be honest. I don't use Twitter to promote things, which I know you're supposed to do, but um, that platform is for jokes and that's all. And if you use it for anything else, you're using it wrong. Hot take. Where is Doggo? Great question. Banjo is downstairs right now. Operation downstairs dog. Persists. Thank you, Armin Sykes. Um, yeah, he was, while I was away, boarding with his physical therapist, which... He's in rehab. Obviously, I adopted a dog with a major medical issue, and I knew that that would be a thing that he would need to be rehabilitated. So um, that's what he's doing. Well, that's what he did do, which was really good for him. It's like makes me not feel bad about going away for a period of time because um, the extended vet session is so good for the dog that it's almost like more helpful to his health if I'm not around. <laughs> Taking him for too many walks. Letting him walk upstairs, all that good stuff. Thank you, Rogari. Oh, he's doing well. Yeah. What are my thoughts on Callisto Protocol? Yeah, I might make a um a video about it. It would be late and weird, but I have opinions. Um, I finished it, and. I think I got most of the achievements. I think there were only three I didn't get. I didn't get the maximum security achievement, though I ended up finding the game very easy in the end. Um, some fights were annoyingly tedious, but I really did end up finding it easy, which was confusing because I feel like people talk about that difficulty being impossible. Like the final boss fight was hard and two head, the amount of times that you fight that thing was hard. But uh, otherwise, because dodge is just left, right, left, right. As long as you don't try to go for the perfect dodge, which doesn't even help you that much. Um, I don't know, I probably could have gone for maximum security. I didn't. Um, and I also didn't get the achievement for all of the collectibles, but I think I got all the others. I did, uh, I ended up having fun with it, but found it to be a lot more like Gears of War than Dead Space, like by a dramatic margin, which I would not have expected for some reason. And I would love to sit down and talk to somebody about it. I did not find it scary at all ever and i don't actually know why i can't put my finger on why it didn't scare me all the ingredients are there didn't find it scary thank you abrupt to winter what are my thoughts on queen latifah i don't know that i have any <laughs> i'm not sure i have a, a formulated opinion on queen latifah Great question. Let's do that. Okay. Ask Troy about the Last of Us premiere tonight on the next Playwatch Listen. I'm sure we will be talking about The Last of Us on Playwatch Listen probably for the next two weeks, if I would guess. Definitely will be a thing that will happen. I think the focus on melee or induce the scare factor because you're always up close. Absolutely. I think the fact that you never felt like you had to be away from anybody made it less scary. Um, in fact, I was running at people, right? I was like running towards them um, majority of the time. So 
wanting to be in their proximity definitely reduces some of the scariness. But it also, it just had things that you're like, like you look down a hallway. It's a beautiful game, by the way. I think it's a very, very, very good looking game. You look down a hallway and the hallway's dark and there's a light flickering and you can hear something. And I'm like, I understand that this has all of the elements of something that should scare me. And yet I am not afraid. The lighting is good. The sound design is very good. Um, there's stuff that like other games would do that would be scary that in Callisto Protocol I found cheesy, strangely, um, like the noise of a big horde that you're hearing when hiding inside of um, like a vent or something. And I'm like, in a lot of other cases that would scare the crap out of me. In this, it's it's a really strange one. Uh, thank you, Matrips. Hey, welcome, then, Falidus. Thanks for watching. <laughs> what are my expectations about the day before? I don't even know what that is. What's the day before? Let me look that up. The day before is an open-world MMO survival set in deadly post-apocalyptic America. Oh, I'm sure I have seen a trailer for this. I have this very good habit of forgetting things. Excited for Judas, curious about Redfall. I have seen Judas already. Years ago. I'm sure it's different now. Curious about Redfall. Yeah, I, look, I love Arcane. Um, the thing about Redfall is I don't love the marketing approach of it being very multiplayer focused. That's not what I want from my Arcanes, but that is okay. They don't all have to be for me. So I'm not, I'll, I'll almost definitely play and enjoy that game, but it's not like I'm excitedly waiting for it just because it's not so much my thing. Thank you, Skytha. The two ones up. Thank you. Did I watch the new Avatar movie? No, I haven't seen it yet. Um, I really want to see. I don't know if it's pronounced Megan or Megan, the creepy doll. I think I'm gonna go see that sometime this week. Very excited about it. I don't really have any interest in Avatar. Thank you, Venobs. <laughs> Thank you. Um, somebody asked if I'm excited for Armored Core. Like, objectively, yes. Um, and I would think most people probably are. I would go before. We don't buy my parents an LA house. <laughs> you think that's something I can just afford to do? <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah, I could just afford to buy my parents a house in LA that they can't even live in. <laughs> Why would I do that? Uh, thank you, Strider849. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Do I think Atomic Heart will be good or just another asset flip? Well, it's definitely not an asset flip. Very few games are. We ever use that term. Um, I think Atomic Heart looks really good, personally. And, uh... Uh... When, it's coming out soon, right? That's one of the ones that's coming out this month or next month? It's soon, whatever it is. No, it looks great. Especially because, um, it looks a lot more like Wolfenstein than the most recent Wolfenstein. Like, I love the new Wolfenstein games. Uh, Colossus and New Order, at least. So it being like that, Looks great to me. I'm happy for it. Thank you, Snake55XK. What's my thoughts on the Hogwarts game? It looks very good. I have friends who are working on it. Uh, I'm very conflicted by not wanting to support JK Rowling, and I think everyone needs to do whatever they think is right while also acknowledging that even seeing conversation about that game is... Um, there, there are a lot of, of uh, trans people in general, who just cannot disassociate even the name of the game with with the shit JK Rowling's about. She was my first ever mute on Twitter, actually. Such a bummer. You'd be such a cool person, just shut up. <laughs> just, you could have just run off into the woods like I think Stephanie Maya did, and everyone would be like, cool, man. <laughs> like, I really loved your work, but why? Shut up. Stop. So I don't really know. 
the game looks really cool and I, I do have friends on that team and I'm not really sure what to do about it. Uh, I did not take a vacation, I just didn't stream. Um, Shin Kalal said, in the process of tattoo removal, I remember you are also getting removing one on your wrist. You have to get completely removed. No, but pretty close. Um, like, you can't see anything there. It's all gone. You can still see it there, so I just have a bunch of dots that I recognize I should go get fixed, but I don't care enough, because I did it for a company that wanted me to. That one, you can just see that dot there. Just one dot left on that one. Um, and I don't work there anymore. <laughs> nowhere I care. No, sorry, no matter nowhere I work now cares. Um, they were like, we'll pay for it. And they did stop paying for it. And yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Moon Fangy Music. Thanks for the three months, my friend. Thanks, Skytha. I appreciate it. Have I heard of the rumored Microsoft Direct this month? I have not. I don't really pay attention to games news that much um, anymore. So I miss a lot of those kinds of things. I had no idea. Dope man, how crazy is it? I've been following your career since about 2011. I don't even know if that's possible. I think I only started in 2012. So I don't know if that's even possible. <laughs> Pretty sure I started in 2012. It might have been late 2011. I don't even remember. It's over a decade, whatever it is. It's a long fucking time. Did I see Puss in Boots 2? People are really hyping that up, man. Um, I haven't seen it. And, uh... Yeah, I, I did see one scene where Puss in Boots... <laughs> I guess. Confronts death. Um, which is a, the sentence I never thought that I would say. But here we are. Um, and it looked really good. But I then I watched the trailer and wasn't into it. But I was like, well, maybe the trailer is more child-oriented. And uh, I don't know, man. It was weird. I've seen so many people be like, fuck yeah, Puss in Boots will die on this hill. And I was like, all right. <laughs> what the hell? Okay. Hell yeah, Puss in Boots. Go for it, my guy. Thank you, Jackman777 and JX Boogs. Thank you. Stick said, how are you, Alana? I am doing well. I'm a little bit sick right now. It is cold and rainy. Um, leaving home really sucks. It's always very, very, very hard. And this time was extra hard. Um, but thankfully, I had Banjo to come home to, which made it a little bit better. So that was nice. Um... But otherwise I didn't want to go at all. And then I get back here and it's so sunny in Australia and it's so cold here. It's 13 Celsius right now. It's chilly. Before anyone tells me, that's not cold. I live in Canada. This is cold. I'll show you cold. Cold is relative. We acclimate. Okay. Stop it. <laughs> it's my number one internet pet peeve. Literally my number one. Oh, I well, you thought you were cold. <laughs> I live in the snow. Shut up. It's irrelevant. If I lived in the snow, I would also adjust and acclimatize to whatever shit you're in, okay? Cold is relative. If someone says they're cold, they're saying that they are cold in relation to the temperature that they are accustomed to in the place that they live. Not accustomed to where you fucking live, okay? Shut up. <laughs> it drives me nuts. It's relative. Well, actually, I think you'll find out there's a, there's a storm in New York State. I don't care. I don't live there. I mean, I do care. I hope you're all okay, but okay? <laughs> Shut up. Cold is relative. Wow, oh, that's t-shirt weather. I don't care. <laughs> I don't know who it is that's talking like this, but I have no fucking tolerance for whoever this person is. <laughs> um, thank you, Ninjackles. Disco Sidebun said, where's Banjo? Where's the baby boy? He's such a good boy. <laughs> My makeup's amazing today. Thank you. I'm almost wearing none. Um, I, I put a little bit of highlighter on my nose. It should look nice. Just here. I put a little line of highlighter. And I did this little tidy little flick of uh, brown powder. Which is probably I shouldn't have done, really. It looks a bit stupid. 
We did that on both sides. See, it just smudges. Maybe it was a bad idea. Um, and then I, I put a little bit of the same brown powder on the insides. That's all I did. The cheat is the, the, I have permanent makeup, so I have eyebrow tattoos, which are very faded, obviously. And uh, my eyelashes get glued on my face, so then I don't have to do anything. I don't have to do anything. How am I doing after the accident? That was like two years ago. I'm <laughs> good, thank you. I just have a pretty bad knee. Hey, Susie, what's up? Thank you for the four months, my friend. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, OG Josie, for the tier one sub. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Am I watching Games Done Quick? I was watching a little bit today while I was working. Yes. Big fan of GDQ. Always a fun watch. Thank you, Th Than Rand. Um, this another accident I didn't know about. Oh God. <laughs> Any chance of visiting PAX Oz this year? They do ask me to go. Yeah, I could see myself going this year. It depends on schedule. Obviously this year was definitely ruled out. The whole God of War Ragnarok situation, video game existing and coming out meant that I feel like my October, November and December were just fucking minced. Like, didn't exist. Like just belonged to the gods, the Norse ones. I had no, I just, it was, and it was gone with the wind. What was I supposed to do about it? Um, didn't exist. Ba, ba, thank you, Trumba, tis, for the three months. Thank you. <laughs> Ever start succession? No, I haven't yet. I should. Thank you, Infrared. Happy New Year. Will I be attending PAX East? Um, only if uh, somebody sends me or if I get paid to go. I've ultimately been to so many conventions at this point that I won't go for fun anymore. I also don't really find them that fun anymore. I think I've been to too many. Um, but I'll always go for work because I love visiting the cities and seeing the people, but I won't fly myself. It would just be, I think it would border on insanity to have been going to those conventions since I was like 14 and to still be doing it every, every time I could go somewhere else and do other things. It would be a bit nuts. I don't know if this is a controversial take probably is. Um, but it would be like how I feel about people who you meet who are like, Oh yeah, we go to Disneyland five times a year. We go to Disney world eight times a goddamn year. That's all, yeah, you got, oh, you've only been once? Oh, that's sad. You gotta hit it at least a month. Every month, you gotta hit up Disney World and do the same fucking thing and stand in the same goddamn lines and give all of your money to the same one company. And if you don't, mm -mm -mm, what are you doing with your laugh? And um, I don't get it. I'm hearing a lot of grievances today, apparently. But whenever you meet somebody who's like, yeah, we go to Disneyland every few months. I don't understand it, man. I just do something else. Like, if you're happy, I get it. Okay, that's cool. That other cool things also exist that cost less money. That's all I'm saying. And you could do other things. And I have met people in line who were like condescending. I brought my dad. My dad and I went to Disney World and it was awesome because my dad's such a kid. He loves the theme park. Um, and when you grow up in Australia, you don't really go to Disney because there isn't one. <laughs> so any of the kids who've been to Disney World or Disneyland are like super cool. Everyone's like, oh my God, how was it? Was it the best? Holy shit. What is that? Uh, and so you get really excited about it. And they basically become the popular kid for like a month, right? Any kid who goes to Disneyland or Disney World as an Australian is the coolest kid on the planet. Clearly has rich parents. My parents never flew me out of the country because who has the money to fly a child overseas, right? So, oh, thanks for the raid, Andy. So when you meet a kid in Australia who's been to Disneyland or Disney World, they're popular they're straight away. And they come back with the merch. 
you know, they have the backpack because we have uniforms in Australia, so they can't actually wear it. <laughs> they have like a backpack and like a pencil case. And you're like, oh, my fucking God, you've been to Disneyland. Super cool. Went with my dad. We had a great time. Um, and we went to Universal as well. And it was super fun. But we met this family in front of us who were like, oh, this is your first time? And we were like, yeah. And they were like, you're both so old. <laughs> you're like, well we're foreign. Um, <laughs> like how many times have you been to Australia? <laughs> like, so you, I take it you haven't been to the Great Barrier Reef though? How, wow, you're so old to have not been to the Great Barrier Reef. And they were like, no, you'll you'll get addicted. You go, we come every six months. It's crazy to think that you've only been here one time. You, you've been missing out your whole life. Don't think I have. Don't think I have. I think I'm all right. It's really weird. <laughs> um, I had a fun time. I think the, the people who go constantly rather than doing other things, it's, you know what? I am happy for them. I'm happy for you to enjoy it. I just don't relate. I just don't relate. Thank you, Killix. There is no Disney in Australia. Did I ever go to Dreamworld in, in Queensland? Absolutely. Am I excited for Super Nintendo World at Universal? Yes, I am. I'm so stoked about that. It looks awesome. I would go to the Japan one if I could. It looks so sick. Thank you, R. Lukeo and True Heart. I'm Maisotti. I also prefer Universal. Um, but I think that's because I've never really been a huge Disney person. So obviously that plays into it. Wet and Wild, hell yeah. Oh, hey, Sarah. <laughs> uh, Wet and Wild, and what's the other one? White Water World? I think it's White Water World. That everyone jokingly calls Wet Dream World. That said, Dream World in Australia had like one of the most horrific um, accidents, like horrific ride accidents, like, like unfathom, like I think about it all the time. Really bad. Um, there's a ride that's like one of those you like sit in a donut and it just takes you on a, like a water thing just around a little water raft sort of loop and uh i don't even know that i want to tell you this all i'll say is that there, there was a family who was split into two rafts and the second raft when it was going up the conveyor belt for them to get off flipped and um everyone died somebody got decapitated in front of their family, because the family got off in front of them. So, that happened. I've also been on that ride numerous times. Uh, and I can't get it out of my head, and I've never been to Dreamworld since. Not necessarily related, I've moved countries. Um, but it is awful to think about. Like, one of the daughters was standing looking at that happen to her mother, I believe. Super awful. But that, I think, is our only major... Because, I mean, I think there's, like, there, there was that Australia... Sorry, that American um, theme park that had to get shut down because there were so many accidents. It was like a water park in, in one of the flyover states. Because um, we also have Movie World in Australia, which I actually think is awesome. Movie World is so fucking cool. And it actually kind of went viral on Twitter recently. Uh, who tweeted me? I think Joey did. Where, like, Movie World is basically a DC-specific theme park. Um, Warner Bros. Movie World. And there's a Scooby-Doo ride, which is the fucking best. Um, and... They have, uh, the thing that went viral is, uh, what's his name? The groovy baby guy. <laughs> I can't remember what his name is. Oh, it's basically like every Warner Bros. DC character. It's very fun. Very fun. Austin Powers, that's it. Austin Powers just like walks the streets, which uh, I guess doesn't really happen that often. It's very fun. I've never been to Six Flags. I would really like to. Six Flags sounds really fun. Yeah, what's the name of that, um... The 
Theme park, most dangerous. Theme park, USA, what's it called? Action park, is that it? <laughs> People called it class action park. <laughs> they called it class action park, that's so funny. Action, it was in New Jersey, I didn't realize that. Action park, New Jersey. Action park, New Jersey. I've definitely read about this before. It is nuts. Yeah. You got a Gemily exclusive comic from Six Flags? That's cool. Actually, this is like the biggest flex in the world. I'm really sorry to follow this up with that. I could get it, but it's just in that room. Um, Gemily drew me a custom Batman for my 27th birthday and um, had it... Uh, um, sorry, I'm really bad with words today, clearly. Uh, what's it called? Like, the name for delivered, but it's on the same, couriered. Had it couriered to my house. They knocked on my door and, yeah, it was, it's nuts. So I have that, like, a custom Jim Lee Batman that was delivered to me on my birthday from Jim Lee. Crazy. Um, and it's still in the packaging. I really need to get it framed. Um, Action Park was an amusement and water park located in Vernon Township, New Jersey, United States, on the grounds of the Vernon Valley slash Great Gorge Ski Resort. The park consisted primarily of water-based attractions and originally opened to the public in 1978 under the ownership of Great American Reservation. Action Park featured three separate attraction areas, the Alpine Center, Motor World, and Water World. The last one was the first modern American water park. Wow, that's cool. Uh, many of its attractions were unique, attracting thrill seekers from across the New York metropolitan area. Its popularity went hand in hand with a reputation for poorly designed rides, undertrained and underage staff, intoxicated guests and staff, and consequently poor safety record. At least six people are known to have died as a result of mishaps on rides at the park. My god. Healthcare workers and local residents had nicknamed the place Traction Park, Accident Park, Class Action, Class Action Park, and Friction Park. That's funny. Um, because if six people died, imagine how many people got injured. Probably a lot. Thank you, Paul Grind. Thank you for the sub, my friend. Wonderland in Sydney. I don't know what that is. Is that the one with the face? No, 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 no. That has a different name. Wonderland in Sydney. Wonderland. Sydney. I've never even heard of Wonderland before. We have an Australia world in Queensland. How do I deal with the weather whiplash between USA slash Oz or a QLD and Cali close enough that it's not that bad? Um, so they're in different hemispheres, which means that it's currently summer in Australia and winter in the US. Uh, it is about 30 degrees Celsius in Australia and 13 degrees Celsius in California, uh, or at least in LA where I am. So that is like massive weather whiplash. They're not even remotely close in temperature. Um, and you just kind of dress differently. <laughs> the same as you would if you were flying to a colder place. You know, that's why I'm wearing just, just this nice hoodie that I got on and I got some pants on and I got some nice fuzzy socks. Whereas in Australia, I just sort of didn't wear clothes. Just, just sort of war. I don't. What is? I didn't even realize this had that. Do I? Does this give off KKK vibes? <laughs> Did I? To by accident? Um. Why would you put a peak on any white hood? If something, it does look more like Boo from Mario, right? If something is white and has a hood, I would just not ever do this. Personally, I've never put the hood up before. Um, just as a rule, don't make it pointy. If it's white, make it flat, okay? Just, just don't do that. What game am I most looking forward to in 23? Um, currently Dead Space Remake, because Callisto Protocol did not quite scratch that itch. I like that my Twitch chat is banning comments automatically related to the KKK. That's actually very good. So LA was a location for National College Football Championship. Have you noticed more tourists in town? 
I don't really go anywhere and I've only been home for a day, so no. But I never would. I would never notice, I don't think. I don't think I would ever be like, hmm, slightly more tourists in LA because when do I ever go anywhere, you know? Um, but also I feel like this city's probably always full of tourists, so I don't, I think you probably wouldn't really miss. Definitely excited for the Resident Evil 4 remake. I hope they do it well. Definitely. I'm gonna actually, let's have a look at list of game releases 2023. List of game releases 2023. Shall we? I look at these lists so often. Like, well, is there no really way for me to like put this that makes any sense? Um, I would reckon that lists of game releases is like one of my top most searched things for sure. January, One Piece Odyssey, which actually looks pretty sick. Persona 3 Portable, Persona 4 Golden. Banger. Colossal Cave, Fire Emblem, Engage, Forspoken, which I'm thinking I'm going to play the demo today. NBA All World, Dead Space. Definitely very excited about Dead Space. So first would be a Dead Space and potentially Forspoken. We don't know yet. Age of Empires 2, which I love, but no. Um, Hogwarts Legacy, again, looks like a good game. I'm not sure how I feel about it. Wild Hearts, yes. Atomic Heart, yes. Like a Dragon Ishin, absolutely yes. Very excited about that. That's very high up on the list for me. PlayStation VR 2. Also, yes. Horizon Call of the Mountain. I've played that. I don't think I'm allowed to comment on it, though. Um, Octopath 2. I'd be down. I'd be down for that. Just scroll right past Destiny, which I used to play a lot of. Can't do it anymore. Can't do it. How do I deal with lens fog on the Quest 2? Oh, I've never had any lens fog on the Quest 2 that I'm aware of. People ask me questions sometimes like, what do you do about getting sweaty? I don't think my face sweats. I'm not saying that that doesn't happen to people, but I don't think my face sweats. Um, am I abnormal? My body sweats. But I don't think my face really sweats. Uh, Wolong Fallen Dynasty. Absolutely very excited about that based on the demo. I loved it. Um, I don't think it was quite as good as Sekiro. Maybe it sits somewhere between Sekiro and Neo. Uh, but it looks great and, and played well. I love Fatal Frame. Like Fatal Frame person. Listen, anything that's a survival horror really is going to be high up on my list. So let's... Fatal Frame, The Mask of the Lunar Eclipse is the re-release of the 2008 game, right? Yes. Um, and I'm not sure what the consensus on it is, but I'll always play a new Fatal Frame. I am down. Maybe I'll make a playthrough of that one, actually. Hopefully it's scary. Not sure. Skull and Bones. Hey, I'm curious. Jedi Survivor, I think it'll be really good. I thought the first one was like quite good. Um, I imagine the second one will be one of those ones where it's like, you did it. You figured it out. Bayonetta Origins, sadly not so much. RE4 Remake, absolutely yes. Crime Boss Rock A City, I'm not even sure what that is. System Shock Remake, absolutely yes. I've already played a lot of Sifu. Oh, what's like Sifu Jamaica? Dead Island 2? I feel like I'm unique in that I didn't love the first Dead Island. Um, I found it to be very buggy. I get that it was fun, and I understand the appeal. Just wasn't super into it myself. Uh, I also haven't caught up on the gameplay. I should should check that out. But I haven't done that yet. Thank you, Perfeffel. <laughs> Benjo and I are doing well. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Has Troy gotten past the train? He hasn't. He hasn't. The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, absolutely, yes. Do you want to take bets on if that comes out on May 12th? I don't know about that one, boss. Suicide Squad, interested-ish. Diablo 4 is one of my most anticipated of the year, absolutely. I think it looks so good. Um, 
it was probably my favorite trailer at the Game Awards. Very excited about Diablo. I also haven't played a Blizzard game in a really long time, outside of Diablo Immortal, which I also enjoyed. I know most people didn't, but I had a fun time. I think I ended up playing about 12 hours, so I never got to any of the like end game stuff that costs everybody money, um, and I liked it. But Diablo 4, almost definitely gonna be better. Final Fantasy 16. Wait, oh, it's coming to Switch later? I guess that makes sense. Baldur's Gate 3, I have played that. A while ago, last year? The year before? I played it a hot minute ago, and um, I think Larian's great at what they do. It felt certainly a lot like their other games, but that makes sense. And then we have... Oh, you want a link to the list? Hang on. Yeah. There you go. Um, someone just said your accent is thicker after you've been there. That's funny. There was someone else in chat who said your accent is gone. <laughs> Make up your damn minds. Okay. Uh, AEW Fight Forever. Don't even know what that is. Battlefield Mobile, am I right? Killer Clowns from Outer Space. That does look fun. Oh my god, this is the first year we get EA Sports FC. FIFA is dead. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Yes. First half. Oh, Hollow Knight Silk Silksong. Absolutely. Layers of Fears I'll play as well. For sure, yeah. Redfall definitely will play. Starfield, obviously, if that comes out this year as well. Who knows? Wonder if changing the name will result in lower sales. I mean, I kind of feel like it has to. Um, people are gonna want to find FIFA anyway, and I'm I'm sure that search engines will do a thing where if you input FIFA, you get redirected to EA Sports FC. <laughs> it's so funny, uh, but that brand name is so synonymous with the game. I actually think it's more synonymous with the game with the organization, but obviously that's just because I work in the games industry. Um, I think of the video game before I think of FIFA, the organization. And that's gotta hurt it. Like there's no way that everybody has heard the news that it's been rebranded. Most ma vast majority of FIFA players will not have um, been aware that it has rebranded. So it'll be really interesting to see. It'll be really interesting to see the the outcome, I think. Is Telltale still alive? They are in a different version now. In a different version. Thank you, Kato. Oh, but I say Athletic Greens has made an impact on how you feel. Been considering it for a while. Yeah, so I'm currently drinking AG1 from Athletic Greens, who are a sponsor. You've probably seen me do sponsorship videos, but this isn't sponsored, right? So like if there's a segment in a YouTube video it's sponsored, but I just actually do drink this stuff a lot, um, which is why I took the sponsorship. Has it had an impact on how I feel? Yes, I think that it uh, helps with energy and definitely helps with digestion. So again, they are sponsored. Well, they do sponsor me, but they are not sponsored in this context. <laughs> this is not a sponsorship. The stream is not sponsored. It's also just like it has, they have so many nutrients that it's like, good for you regardless. I actually had this this one mixed with Element, um, which is just like another nutrition powder, basically, that I have both in the same one, just to make sure you get them. There's basically no downside. Sponsor, but right, not right now is correct, yes. They are a sponsor, but not in this context. Anything that takes money out of EA and FIFA at once is a good thing. I am a low FIFA and they agreed. Um... Definitely agree with that. They gotta be one of the worst companies in the entire world, right? For sure. Um, what else have we got? Marvel Spider-Man 2, obviously. Games expected in 2023 with no launch date. Age Vampires for Alan Wake 2. Big yes, big yes on that. I think Arc 2 looks pretty rad. I wonder how involved Vin Diesel's going to be. It just couldn't have. I never saw it coming. It's so weird. Armored Core 6. Assassin's Creed Mirage does look good. I don't know that I'm ready to go back to Assassin's Creed yet. I did actually 
in Australia go through a bunch of my old collectibles. And um, I brought to the US with me some of the like stuff that's gotta be super limited edition now. Um, packaging from the Assassin's Creed Black Flag press edition. So it wasn't even the collector's edition. It was stuff that was given only to press for Assassin's Creed Black Flag, which is a game that I love. So I imagine that the amount of those in the wild is extremely low. Um, I brought back three things from that with me, which is very cool. Do you think Xbox is gonna do a surprise show? I have no idea, my friend. I saw people be upset that Xbox didn't have a presence at the Game Awards. I saw somebody call it a slap in the face, but it made a lot of sense to me considering their whole strategy in 2022 was we're gonna show you stuff that's coming out in the next 12 months. Here it is. Why would they break that at the end of the year? Why would they wait until December to break that strategy? It just made a lot of sense to me. Um, if there is a show on January 25th, that's very exciting. I have no idea if that was going to happen or not. I really don't know. But uh, yeah, it really didn't surprise or upset me in any direction that they were not um, present at the Game Awards. It was almost odd to me that other people were upset about them not being there. I, again, I saw the quote slap in the face. It's like, but, the, but, but you, you knew what they were doing. You knew, you know? Um, Atlas Fallen, remind me what that is. I, I know the name and I think I was excited about whatever that is, Atlas Fallen, what is it? That was the one from Opening Night Live. I think that I thought that the combat looked cool in Atlas Fallen. Yeah, I think so. Avatar Frontiers of Pandora. I feel like that has a pretty good chance of being better than even the movie. Which, can I, in chat, can we get a poll? People who've seen Avatar, did you like it? Then you won. People seem very split. I don't really have any interest in it. I get why other people do. Um, did you like it? Have you seen it and did you like it? It was good and you cried. Loved it, just thought it was fine. Could not care less. Okay, well, <laughs> is Jeff in here? He did it, okay. Cause I have not seen it. Is it killing box office records? How? It's so weird. Like, I don't think I know anyone who's a giant Avatar fan. It's perplexing, that's all I'm saying. I'd be perplexed. It does sound like it's too long. I didn't see it, or haven't seen it, and I just don't really have interest in seeing it, despite thinking it looks beautiful. I was gonna see it when I went home, but then my dad went and saw it without me, so I was like, well, <laughs> don't really need to. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> James Cameron. The story is boring. <laughs> James Cameron is the main character of Hollywood. I will say, I think that what James Cameron does is very valuable. In the same way that like George, George Lucas was extremely valuable for the industry. I do think James Cameron is very valuable for the industry now. Um, pushing tech is a great reason to make something. And it does look beautiful. Yeah, you're right. That's a really good comment uh, to, who said that? Uh, 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 I lost it and it's gone and it's gone. It's Wartburg, there you go. Pretty much the textbook example of how the vast majority of any audience is not as online as we think. And this is a thing that I try to reiterate all the time, especially with video game news. Most people who have played The Last of Us have never heard of Naughty Dog. They don't know what Naughty Dog is. They definitely don't know who Neil Druckmann is. Um, and so when we think about even those leaks, most people hadn't ever heard of them. It's very easy to forget that when you are online and in the video game community and on Reddit and on YouTube and it's all you see. Most people who play video games don't follow video game news. And I think this is probably the same kind of thing, right? Most people who like Avatar probably just aren't on Twitter tweeting about it. <laughs> same as my poll, right? We currently got 60% of people haven't seen it. And yet, millions, they say. Okay, back to the list. Black Myth, Wukong. Don't buy that that comes out. Don't buy it. Not coming out this year. You lied to my face. 
This new Dreamlight Valley. I thought that was already out. That is already out, isn't it? Oh, it's only an early access. People seem to really like that game. That makes sense. Goes free to play on that date. Got it. Fallout 4. <laughs> What's going on here? Wait a minute. Like a dragon Gaiden, the man who erased his name? I'm sorry, what? Like a dragon, does that mean it's Yakuza? Gaiden? Like a dragon Gaiden. It is. What? It's a new Yakuza? Prequel? So, because yeah, Like a Dragon is now the name for Yakuza. Like a Dragon Gaiden, the man who erased his name, is also called Ryuga Gotoku 7 Gaiden no wo Keshita Otoku Lit. Like a Dragon 7 side story, the man who erased his name is an upcoming action adventure spin off of the Yakuza series. It's being developed by Ryuga Gotoku Studio for the worldwide release. Okay, so that is, uh, takes place in summer 2018. Bridge the gaps between Yakuza 6 and Like a Dragon and Like a Dragon 8 from the perspective of Kiryu. Cool. Cool. I'm sure I knew about that and forgot. My bad. Lollipop Chainsaw Remake. Never played it, you know. You really should. Lords of the Fallen. Uh, I've always like been like, I think I probably would like Lords of the Fallen. I've just never gotten around to playing it. Midnight Suns. Minecraft Legends? Is that also an early access? I'm confused about this list. <laughs> Payday 3. Replaced looks awesome. Replaced looks so good. I do like the look of Slitterhead. Dark Pitches Switchback VR. Ooh, okay. I'm definitely gonna get a PSVR 2. For sure. The Dark Pictures Switchback VR is an upcoming rail shooter video game. Oh, okay, so it'll just be like how they did. I think there was an Until Dawn um, on Rails VR game, I'm pretty sure. Warhammer 40k Bolt Gun, very excited about that. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre video game? A bit out of date, but all right. Game? Isn't there already one as well? Oh, this is uh, an asymmetrical horror experience based on the groundbreaking and iconic 1974 horror film. So there's already one. This is the second one. Was this made by Sumo? It is. Okay, I did know about that too. Yeah. Cool. Very excited about Volker. That's the boomer shooter Warhammer. It looks awesome. Can't wait. Definitely going to play it. Wolf Among Us 2. Very excited about that. And there we go. 22 inappropriate red carpet moments. <laughs> thank you, Anthony Dennis Music. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So I would say, if we've been over the list, my most anticipated game. It's still Dead Space. <laughs> and then RE4. Yeah, I'm going to say RE4 Remake. Uh, which is funny because obviously everybody's played that a bunch of times. Uh, not super excited about Stalker 2. I don't know why. I know that I should be. Oh, obviously Breath of the Wild 2 is huge as well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Are we far in the world of the chainsaw? I'd play it. Damn. Are the sleeves of this hoodie sewn or are they separate pieces? Great question. I would love to tell you. They're like separate pieces up to an extent. So they, this, I mean, it's a, it's a very weird hoodie. It's just big baggy sleeves and they like, I don't know, I like it. It's um, also came with like um, a little bag that you like sling over the top. It has a panda on it. It's panda themed. How do you wash it without it falling apart? It's sewn. It is sewn together. It is not two layers. It is just pretending to be two layers. Did I play Signalis? No, and I'm sorry about it. I have no doubt that I will love it when I do play it. 
Did I hear about CDPR working on Witcher 1 remake? Yes, I covered that in my gaming news show. Um, oh yeah, Avowed isn't on this list. That's a great point. I forgot about that. Um, yeah, I'm excited about Witcher 1 because I love The Witcher 2. I think it's underrated. The Witcher 3, I think, is ac accurately rated. The Witcher 1, I think, is just not that good, which is unfortunate. It needs a remake because there's concepts in it that I like and I love Witcher 2 and The Witcher 3. Witcher 1 is not a game I would recommend to most people, so... I'm very glad they're remaking it because it's just needs it. It's um, it's a bummer to have a trilogy of two very good games and one very poor game. Not that that's uncommon, um, but like it doesn't even hold up like Mass Effect 1 does. It's not even that good. It's just, I just don't think The Witcher 1 is a very good game. So yeah, I'm stoked to see it. I think it's it's a worthy one. Looking forward to playing it in 2029. Technically, it is easier to remake something than to develop something from scratch because pre-production is a lot shorter and pre-production otherwise is a very long period of time and a long process. But CDPR are pretty slow. It's, it's, it's not, it doesn't need a facelift. Witcher 1 needs a remake because the combat is not good. So it's not that it needs to look prettier. I never care about graphics anyway. Doom 1993 is one of my favorite games. I don't I don't need dim graphics, right? It can look like ass. I don't mind. Um, it just plays poorly, in my opinion. I know there are a lot of people who love it. I just was not really a fan of the first Witcher, which sucks because I love the others. What's wrong about the combat? I think it's slow, it's sluggish, it's tedious. <laughs> That's how your ex described you. Oh boy, I'm sorry. Hey, thanks for the raid, Mary Kish. Hi, everybody. I have, this is my first stream of the year, my first stream in over a month. Welcome. We chatting about video games, and then I'm going to play the first book and demo. In a bit. Good art style is important. I definitely agree with that. Because I, I do think Doom 1993 has a good art style. Yes, it's it's pixelated and by graphic standards, terrible. But um, it's a great game with a very distinct art style. Cacodemons are... I thought about getting a Cacodemon tattooed on me. I decided against it. But I thought about it. The thought occurred to me. How's my brain doing these days? Hey man, thanks for asking. I'm doing good. All is well. Did I finish High on Life? No. I will though. Um, no, while I was home, I finished Crash Bandicoot 4. Finally, which, dude, the last level of Crash 4? Bro. Oh my god. It is unbelievably hard. Um, and I'm not talking about the boss fight. The boss fight is not hard. The last level of Crash Bandicoot 4. I think I died 200 times. It's... It's harder than Cuphead. <laughs> it's so hard. Um, oh my god. <laughs> so it, it has this into a children's game. Uh, I don't know. You play it and let me know, my guy. It has this part where there are these masks in Crash 4, which is actually very fun and I like them a lot. But there's this part where you have to swap between the four different mask types while platforming. Let me just find it. I kind of can't even believe I did it. It was so fucking hard. <laughs> that you have to time everything perfectly. Oh my God. Um, Crash 4 final level. Let's go hardest level, because no doubt it'll give me the one I want. Hardest level. It is Cortex Castle. Yes, here we go. It's the easiest way for me to pull this up. Um, maybe if I do this. Here. Okay. All right. Uh, 
Okay, Ooh, I'll show you. It's ridiculous, dude. I started, uh, I've been doing this for a while. I put my webcam in Zoom so that I just use display capture. So it's just, it's just like a Zoom call. Um, makes it a lot easier. Okay, so it's this part. This broke me. She's not at the hard part yet. Not, it's actually not even this part yet. It's the next part. Next checkpoint. But you're seeing the masks in action. That's You cheated there. Okay, this bit. Nope, actually still not this bit. <laughs> it's the next bit. It's the bit with the platform after this bit. But all of this is so hard. <laughs> this person is very good at this. Because the masks, basically, they just do different things, right? Um... This, it's this whole sequence here. It has to all be done at once. So that mask lets you hold the trigger to disappear or reappear those lasers. And then you have to jump down and get that purple one and then spin up and land on that TNT. They didn't spin, but that's fine. And then go back to that platform and then get up to that next mask, which will slow down the time so you can get through those blocks so that they won't kill you. We did this very differently. And then you go down, flip yourself upside down, come back up, freeze time, slide through them. Spin yourself up to that mask. Trigger. Upside down. Right way up. Dude. It's so hard. The fact that I... I mean, that's what a perfect run would look like, right? Which means I did that, and I did that that way. Oh my god. <laughs> it's so fucking hard. Uh, Because you have to... Again, I died over 100 times in that one segment. And it's because you have to... To even... Like, you'll... Get, I don't know how to describe it. This part right here is all that nitro, right? So like if you touch that, when you you get, you get jump down, you fall down here, you jump to get the mask that flips you upside down, you hit the trigger, you go up, you get to this mask, and by the time that's happened, you've probably already landed on the nitro, so you've just blown yourself up before you even realize what you have to do, which happens this whole way through. Once you know how to do it, obviously it becomes a lot easier. But like actually getting there and being like, okay, as soon as I hit that, I have to hit the trigger so I can freeze these, so I can slide through them, so I can go down here. Oh my god. Just very spicy Crash Bandicoot 4. Uh, and that's why I, uh, that level is what made me tweet forever ago before I finished it, that I think that Crash Bandicoot is hotter than Dark Souls. And I stand by it. I genuinely believe that to be true. Crash Bandicoot is hotter than Dark Souls. And I don't just mean Crash 4, I mean Crash in general, okay? How long did it take you? I mean, it didn't take that long. Um, I don't need a list of what to do, because once you can do it, or once you know it, you'll get through it just fine. I would say it probably took me the whole level two hours or so. But that's, again, the process of figuring it out, um, which is not that dissimilar to a Souls boss, personally, frankly that you have to find out how to get through it before you can actually do it. But uh, there aren't that many Souls bosses that are taking me two hours to, eh, there are, there are two hours to get through. Um, yeah, dude, just the, the timing has to be so perfect and I think requires more precision. Oh my God, the ice bridge in the original crash, dude. Oh my God, that ice bridge. And then the level right after it, I don't know what the name is, after the ice bridge, um, the one immediately after is also very hard. <laughs> and I I put it down for ages because I was having so much trouble with it. And then when I picked it up again, this is like one of the best gaming moments of my entire life. I put it down and I picked it up again on that level. And I got through it one time without dying at all ever. Perfect, perfect run. After not having done it for like six months. My God. I do think Crash 4 is harder than Sekiro. I find Sekiro easier than Souls though. Don't know why. How are my headaches? Better, worse, or gone? I have not had a single migraine since I had migraine surgery. Not even one. I have my checkup with the surgeon in a couple of weeks. Um, but they told me to wait six to nine months, and if I don't have one, then they're gone, and I have not had one. You know, I think I may have had, like, very minor versions where I've been like, is this a migraine? But really, it's just a headache. Probably the same as, like, anyone else has, so they are gone. 
I got random migraines. I wouldn't call them random. It was every two weeks, at least, um, debilitating migraines that made me vomit for like 18 hours straight. I was at risk of brain damage, major dehydration, etc. So I got surgery to get rid of them. How did surgery get rid of that? Uh, Google it. Google migraine surgery. Um, S F M A S A S F. Every time you sub, I have the same problem, but thank you again. <laughs> Happy New Year. <laughs> I feel like Sekiro is easier since the timing to counter matters more than to dodge. I think the reason that I find Sekiro easier is because I look at Sekiro as a rhythm game and I've always been good at rhythm games. Um, so I found Sekiro because it's just, um, yeah, I, I think I just ended up that, that just clicked with me a lot more than the dodge roll of the others. It is totally DDR. For your fingers. Yeah, 100%. Thank you, Fine Diner. Guitar Hero 3 Master. I do like Guitar Hero. Am I still planning to do a video on Callisto? I spoke about it here. Sekiro has way better checkpoints. Uh, does it? I don't know about that. I actually think that Sekiro and Crash have pretty similarly punishing checkpoints. Um... You see my game of school steadily getting higher and higher. Yeah, I'm going to do a stream for when I hit, or I'm about to hit, 100,000 game of school. Um, I'm not a person who achievement hunts in that I don't play games I don't care about and I won't go for stuff I don't want to, right? So, like, I'm an achievement hunter insofar as if I really like a game or I'm enjoying playing something and I don't want to stop playing it yet, I will check the achievements and go get them to get more time out of a game. But if there's something that I think is going to take too long or is too hard, or I don't think is going to be fun, I just won't do it. Um, and so I don't play games I don't like, which is obviously the easiest way to get a lot of game score. So I'm at 95,000, I think right now. Um, it's my second account and it's just, you know, steadily been, been getting there. So I think that I will Maybe when I get to like 98,000, I'll do a big like 12 plus hour stream where I try and get a few thousand game of school um, and celebrate hitting 100,000 game of school. I did hunt for 80,085. I did for boobs game of school. Did I 100% any game? Uh, I have 100% in a few games. Yeah, a number of games for sure. Try to get an achievement for day a day for Xbox rewards? I didn't even know that was a thing. 95k followers on Twitter or Twitch. I have more followers than that on both those platforms, actually. No, um, 95,000 gamer score. Anyone else getting strange audio stutters? I don't know, I can't hear myself. <laughs> Thank you, Karis. Do I hunt platinums on PlayStation? I do, yes. But even then, not that much. Um, I do the same thing basically on PlayStation where if I think it sounds fun, I will go for it, but pretty rarely. I don't, I don't care about it too much. I don't do it at all on PC. I think that's because like when I'm playing something on PC, I'm playing it to play a video game. Whereas when I'm playing something on my couch, I'm comfortable and enjoying the vibe. Uh, so I approach achievement or trophy hunting on consoles differently to what I do on PC. What do I think of Escape from Tarkov? I've only played it twice and I definitely didn't have the know how to play it. I might ask Steve if he wants to play it because I didn't quite get it um, because I didn't spend enough time in it, I think. And I wasn't sure what I was supposed to be doing um, in terms of like actually <laughs> staying alive. So I played it and fell off of it because I was like, this is a lot. It's very dense. Doesn't really have a tutorial. Um, so I might go back. <laughs> Escape from Tamarkov, Tam? Can, uh, can somebody block him? Can we block him, please? Can we get him out of the chat? <laughs> I don't need that kind of shit here. I don't think it has a tutorial, at least, but I did play it a long time ago, so um, they might have changed that since then. What I think about Warhammer Dark Tide, I love it. I'm a big fan. Big fan. Probably gonna play more of that this year. 
<laughs> exactly, Susie. <laughs> to Morkov. Also, it sucks that I don't have Twitch verified. Not verified. Even in my own chat. You see that? Isn't that nuts? So I have both Tam and Susie here verified. I am not verified on Twitch. <laughs> and I can't get verified for no reason. I don't really know why. Um, <laughs> even in my own chat, they're like, nah, bitch, that ain't you. <laughs> it's so weird. I have reached out to people and been like, hey, can I get verified on Twitch? Because people tend to not believe that it's me. Um, like, is that actually Alana Pierce or is it someone pretending to be Alana Pierce? And I'm like, who knows, bitch, if only there was a way to find out. <laughs> they just never verified me. What's my take on Eye on Life and have you had a chance to play it? Yes, I played it. I actually, the most recent um, episode of my video game writing podcast was with Justin Roiland and Alec Robbins, who both wrote on High on Life. Um, it's really fun to talk to them. And I asked Justin a bunch of questions about like the difference between writing for video games and writing for animation, which was cool. Um, I do have the verified badge on the page. Yes, it's not in chats. Yes. In any case, um, and I did play the game and liked it. I, I thought it was funny. Um, and there's been so much discourse about not thinking the game is funny in a way that like, are you okay? I just, it, you, you don't have to, man. Like comedy is really specific. And if you don't like it, you, you, I just don't feel like you have to write a dissertation about it. <laughs> you know, I don't know, man. <laughs> it's just... Hey, thank you to Anonymous for the five gifted subs. Sorry, I keep ranting today. <laughs> thank you so much. Welcome to Deserted Penguin. <laughs> Psych on Rails, Smoss, Agent Breakfast, and Adverse RX. And thank you, Mr. Walkbook, for the four months. Um, yeah, I don't know. It just, uh, it, 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 like, prompted a bunch of think pieces about humor in video games. You're like, but it is not funny, for I know a funny art. And I just, I don't know, man. Hey, comedy is really subjective. You don't have to like everybody. That's okay. I didn't think it needed to be that deep. Y'all all right? Y'all even trying to have a good time? I'm not sure if this is more complicated than this, but I think you just equip your partner badge by clicking chat identity in your chat box. Chat identity. There's definitely an issue with it. I'm aware of there being an issue with it, um, but I can't see chat identity. I could probably can't do it on my own chat, but uh, no, it is more complicated than that. I've had to reach out to Twitch for it. How was Australia? It was beautiful. I had a great time. No, it definitely won't sort it. Again, Twitch is aware of the problem. <laughs> Little badge to the left of where you type. Yeah, I don't have one. There's no option for me to click verified. Um, but it's something, it was something to do with the phone number. That's what the problem was. Is that I had used my phone number on a different account, so I didn't have my phone number on this account. And I don't have access to the other account anymore. That's, that's what the problem actually is. But again, I've reached out, we'll get it fixed. Uh, have I read the piece on Polygon about FromSoft being sexist because of Melania boss fight who will take that serious after that? Okay. Let me, um, give you a spicy opinion on that one, my friend. I think that if somebody writes an article on Polygon about how they think that Melania is if for some reason anti-feminist, that is a stance that I certainly disagree with. Um, however, I think that video games as a medium are not made worse by people taking them extremely seriously. I think as long as you're not trying to cancel FromSoft um, and you are putting forward an opinion, even one that you know majority of people are not going to agree with on a website um, that uh, discusses socioeconomic standings in a serious video game that is about death and despair. I'm all right with it. I don't agree with the article, 
I do not think the article means games journalism is trash, though, which tends to be the main takeaway just because I don't agree with it. Um, I definitely don't agree with it, but I'm like, if we, if we say that our medium is serious and good and that the game is deep and serious and good um, and it has all of these YouTube videos that do dissertations of the meaning of Elden Ring, then I think that goes hand in hand with allowing that it be conversation that are from... I don't know, uh, uh, I guess extreme feminist perspective or, or a perspective that discusses gender roles. I think that there is room for both of those things. And uh, again, I didn't agree with it at all, but I also did not agree with the outcry. And I don't, uh, whoever read that was a Polygon, was it Kotaku? I don't remember. Um, I imagine that they knew that people were going to hate it and that, that that would get traffic. But I think that we are deserving of serious commentary like that which is funny coming after me just saying the people on high on life were they okay but that is because it just was people who were so mad about not liking jokes <laughs> okay that one i was like yeah, just okay <laughs> different things you know what i'm saying different fucking things um okay we're talking about i actually haven't read the whole article uh, i read bits of it uh from soft from soft millennia Sexist. It's probably the best way to find it. Here we go. It's Polygon. This ah, is the article in question. Oh. Are you okay, my PC? Something weird just happened. What? 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 What the fuck? Oh, okay. Well, that's broken. Try that again. Okay. Uh -huh. Millennia. <laughs> Millennia. Elden Ring. Sexist. Polygon. Yeah. What? <laughs> this is strange. Why? What the fuck? <laughs> I can't pull windows over. Um. All right. Well, I just can't show it to you, apparently. <laughs> That's very weird. Maybe if I don't pull it towards the top, maybe if I just pull it down the bottom, that might do it. Yeah, okay. And then I'm gonna make my webcam. Okay, no, there's so many versions of this. <laughs> this should work. Like this. And that's not really what I wanted to do, but it's okay, we can make it work. All right. This will do. I have no idea what just happened. And maybe if I move this over a bit more, and then this here, and then we move the f uh, shit, this here. Beautiful, okay. Hey, look at us go. Uh, from Software's Elden Rings, Melania embodies From Software's problems with women. The game's strongest boss betrays the devel developer's biggest weakness. She lies there, deep in the belly of Halligtree, as she had merely dozed off in the shafts of light that filtered down. What? <laughs> Melania, the seven, defender of McQuella, has fallen to pieces, her one good arm resting at the feet of the whirls and gnarls that held her child like brother. This enigmatic warrior captured the audience from the moment she appeared, and she featured predominantly in the rest of the game's marketing materials, but instead of becoming an uncontested favorite... She frustrated fans and revealed the limitations of FromSoft's imagination. Melania is hard as nails, endgame encounter, and while optional, she is a brick wall for a lot of players. You know, I had an argument with somebody in an Uber about that recently. An Uber driver who was like, I don't think she's optional, man. And I was like, I'm pretty sure she's optional. And he was like, no, no, I have to do it, man. And I was like, okay, I'm not going to argue that with you. Uh, but I feel validated right now. I knew, I knew she was optional. Uh, reminiscent of other difficult encounters like Lady Maria from Bloodborne, it's a two-phase fight full of fast lethal strikes as Melania heals from damage she's dealt to the player. As you encounter her and fail, she is instantly imposing. Her presence is quietly scary. Her movements are honed and practiced. Her voice is calm and unemotional. Her face is impassive. Everything in the first phase of the fight is designed to thwart and emasculate. There's a deep humor in the idea of a woman whose very attacks steal, steal health from you to empower herself. And the ultimate joke, just when you think you've knocked her down, she gets back up one last time. Melania's first death triggers her final transformation into the goddess of scarlet rot, and she emerges tri triumphantly from her blossom to spread tragically beautiful wings of skin, rot, and butterflies. I actually think her design is beautiful. 
Her body is crusted over with rot and yet reveals her... Are you okay, whoever wrote this? You're enjoying this a lot. Her body is crusted over with rot and reveals her breasts and genitals being as smooth as a doll's. It evokes a confusing mixture of fear and titillation, complicating the act regarding her body. Her lack of protection does not feel like a vulnerability, but a challenge. I think she looks fucking cool, man. Uh, the final part of the fight culminates into a whirlwind of aerial dive bombs, rod expo explosions, and multiple copies of herself dashing around you. I mean, it is a really hard fight. It is a very, 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 very hard fight. When she finally dies, she recedes into the security of the Rot Blossom again, quietly threatening to return in a future time from retribution beyond a typical life cycle. Blaney exemplifies the way FromSoft writes women in its games. Where the bosses are NPCs you meet in the wild, these women have a shared condition. They exist in tragically declined worlds, sharing a specific brokenness, disfigurement, abandonment, and loss. They are afflicted by gender, and the cure for when they are obstacles instead of mutely helpful is for the player to enact... Well, I don't... I immediately don't agree with that. I don't think that that is consistent across all FromSoft characters. Um... But perhaps some of them, maybe even majority of them. But that's because they're, they're pretty depressing worlds, I would say. It is a particular kind of idealized femininity, as fantastical as the foreboding castles and giant trees. Jimmy, you are quiet, void of needs or motivations. Again, pretty consistent across the board. An echoed presence of dolls, mothers, and even helpmeets who guide the player along. Their emotions are muted in more docile counterparts before erupting into shrieking, horrifying hysteria when encountered in combat. Again, pretty consistent. Lenny is made up of the same stuff and isn't unanimously hated either. There is a passion for this giant redhead woman in armor. <laughs> That's true. Still, she is a contentious character subject to social media posts, memes, and arguments. It's obvious that there is a contingent of the audience antagonized by her presence as both a boss, even is if optional, and a figure in the game's story. I mean, obviously, she's very, very, very hard to fight. Uh, quite a few of these archetypal from soft women are beloved by the fans, such as Emerald Herald, the Firekeeper, or more recently Rani the Witch. I do like Rani. Editor's note, Nico is being quite generous here, not listing Demon Souls, Maiden in Black, Dark Souls, infamously heaving giantess Guinevere, Sekiro's Emma, and quite literally then named the doll from Bloodborne. The broader gaming community usually reacts harshly towards female characters, which makes the Soulborn's, Soulsborne community's embrace of them feel positive on the surface. Is that true? I would think that take probably needs some sources. Um, when that affection feels based on the empty, emotionless state or reduce them to infantilized waifus, you realize that hostility and that fondness spring from the same deep sexist roots twins intertwined. To quote Matt Kim in his piece, while female characters in Dark Souls games quiet and alien, again, aren't they all kind of alien? Maybe some of the male characters are a bit more vocal. Yeah, I guess I guess some of the male characters are. Um, like the women can be a little bit more whimsical and demure, softer when they speak to you initially. But I don't think it's consistent across the board. And I also don't feel like all the male characters are super outspoken. They're definitely all alien and weird. But like Ma gets really loud. <laughs> A lot of the male bosses are a little bit louder. Um, while not exclusive to Japanese anime, this sort of archetype is one of the most popular types of characters in the medium. Strange still is that these characters are actively fetishized for their outer worldliness. That's not strange. That's not strange. She's hot. She's hot. Hot fairy lady is just hot. I don't think it's weird. Hot, she's just a hot fairy. You know? <laughs> uh, their lack of broad emotional spectrum is part of their appeal. Additionally, these characters are typically more resilient than everyone else in their story, perhaps because they are unburdened by emotions. Yet one could also argue that their lack of emotion used here as an unfortunate euphemism for men's conception of female shortcomings makes it easy to believe they are capable of such great strengths. Okay, I think this sentence is interesting. I think that is an interesting sentence, which is not necessarily saying that I agree with it, but I don't think that that is something that like should be canceled on the spot is kind of what my opinion on this whole article is. Even if I think I very fundamentally disagree with it, I don't think the fact that I disagree with it means it shouldn't exist. Um, and that's sort of my take here. I think that is an interesting sentence. Do I think it's correct? Probably not. 
do I think it is an interesting conversation to have about a medium that we are pushing to have people take more and more seriously? Yes. I don't think that it is worthy of, of flame initially. I think it is more like an interesting discussion to have. Um, again, especially centering FromSoft, which, um, you know, they make so many games that we have to pry the story out of. They don't lay them out for you. We have to find the story in them. And if we're doing that with breaking down characters and archetypes and tropes, I think that that all kind of goes hand in hand, that, that this can be part of the discussion as well. Is it considered that women having lack of emotion as from soft bosses makes it more believable that they would kick your butt? Maybe, because that there, there is criticism in a lot of media that how would that woman do that? How, but how would that woman do that though? There's no way a woman is strong enough to do that. That happens across film, TV, games consistently, and I'm sure in some cases, uh, like Atomic Blonde is correct. It was really fun to watch. Did I believe that that woman would, would be able to beat up all those men? Probably not. Did I care? Also no, completely fine with it. <laughs> it was fun to watch. Um, and in the case of like, is it possible that, that um, we believe the from soft bosses and they don't get that same criticism that's applied to a lot of other media because they are seen as emotionless, so they've taken out something that women are often viewed as weak for? Potentially. Potentially. Again, not saying I agree with it. Do I think it's interesting? Yes. I think it's an interesting thing that should be allowed to be discussed, even if I don't agree with it, is my whole point for a realm that we take very seriously and for stories and characters that we take very seriously, like FromSoft, which is a thing that I like. I think it's, uh, we should have serious discourse about it too. Uh, FromSoft's female characters who deviate from this quiet doll-like appearance are still written with a lack of emotionality, which feels close to masculine stoicism. See, there's your problem. There's my main uh, point of disagreement. I think a lot of the men in these games are written the same way. And after I did an episode of Video Game Writing 101 as well with um, the team who localize FromSoft games, there was a mention of one of Miyazaki's directive notes across the board for actors being um, less expressive. And I don't think that that is tied to female characters or even masculine stoicism. I think that that is um, an intention of the world building. That is the way that they try to build their worlds. This is very whimsical, magical, floaty. The way they speak in Elden Ring is hello. We're all very short and the world is very bleak. And I think it, ethereal is a really great way to put it. And it all just ties into one actually very successful directing package. Um, I don't think it is uh, an example of sexism. It's a strange emptiness that informs every permutation of character that women embody in these games. Again, I don't think this is exclusive to women. Soulsborne, Soulsborne games are infamous for challenging their audience and over the years have attracted a particular kind of player base, awesome men who take their boss killing performance seriously. To some, the difficulty is the point of these experiences. That attitude has long kept many away from the studio's games, but Elden Ring's popularity attracted a wider audience, ready to have bosses grind them into a dust. I will say the Soulsborne fans who think they're cool because they finished a Soulsborne game, despite a lot of people having done so, are completely insufferable. Um, Lady's boss fight is punishingly difficult, and the audience's hostile and competitive attitudes about it are often steeped in gendered toxicity. Numerous Reddit posts, YouTube videos, and tweets talk about players' failures or successes while littered with sexist slurs. People also fell back into the usual community discourse about which methods of beating her were more valid and which ones made you a pussy. <laughs> They probably did do that, yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Um, these reactions are distasteful, but not surprising. This boss fight creates friction between the developer's idea about gender and its ideas about enabling a power fantasy. It creates a weird performance when the game encourages players <laughs> to embrace failure. This is only heightened by Melania's character design. Again, probably correct that there was a bunch of toxicity surrounding this character, and people probably did use a bunch of gendered slurs. Um, that's probably right. That, the, of all the things I disagree with, you're probably correct that that happened. People probably call her a bitch. People probably call her a bunch of gendered slurs. Uh, the bravado about beating Melania makes sense. She evokes the idea of a virginal warrior like Joan of Arc or Brienne of Tarth, a purity and strength existing in a place beyond femininity. Okay. 
Her aesthetic references Athena or Valkyries, but even when that is stripped away, her nakedness is terrifying rather than provocative. Everything about her is hostile and taunts the player. When faced with a difficult, defiant woman who has never been beaten, men cannot help but fantasize about being the one to take her down. I think that her being the hardest boss in the game was, was that. I think her being the hardest boss in the game would have done that regardless. Do I think that there can exist a culture where men want to be the one to take a woman down? Absolutely, yes. When I worked in um, an IT company, they had, uh, uh, and I was very young, it's like 18. This was disgusting in my opinion. They had uh, a bet on who would sleep with me first in the office that I worked in. I did not sleep with any of them. Um, but do I think that that is a thing that exists in culture? Yes. Uh, do I think that that is a thing worth discussing? Yes. Uh, do I think that that is the case particularly with this game? No. Um, I don't think you're wrong for trying to explore that potential overlap. But in this case, it's just that she's the hardest boss. People were just as hot on talking about Radan, right? Those are the two that everybody spoke about, in my opinion. And um, again, I think that that is a thing that happens in the real world. And I think that connecting the two is interesting. You're, it, I'm not mad at you for discussing it. I don't, I don't hate that you did. Let's take video games seriously and have serious discussions surrounding them, including political ones, even though I know that's scary. I think it's, it's interesting. Um, we have plenty of articles that are silly. We can have serious ones. Um, even if I don't think this is right. <laughs> I think you're wrong, my friend. From the style of hiding the world and story behind item descriptions and esoteric NPC dialogue both make the world unreliable and mysterious, but also reinforces fans' biases towards Melania. She is a receding figure in the narrative, whether by choice or omission. There is some evidence of cut content that could have expanded her actual story. I think her mystery is very cool. Wait, what did I say? Did I say something? Oh, rat in. Um, her story is told largely in fragments prior to encountering her in the Hallow Tree. The largest is her fight against Radan. Am I, am I pronouncing it incorrectly? Do I have a single cousin? Why did you just ask me that question? I have several cousins. I prefer saying Radan. I know I've heard people say Radon. Radan. Um... And there's Radon, Radan, Radon. Yeah. I like the way it sounds. Shown in a story trailer is ahead of the game, the two demigods face off to claim the title of Elden Lord. Radan cuts off her arm and in a desperate move, she takes a sword and leaps onto him, plunging the blade into herself and exploding into a giant rot blossom. The aftermath is clearly shown when the player steps into Khaled, blighted from edge to edge. If a fan missed that trailer, their first encounter with Melania's influence is felt when going to fight Radan, which Hunter Jaren, a herald of Radan, narrates about the general's decline due to Scarlet Rot. It's such a fucking cool part of the game, too. God, it's so cool. Um, I mean, yeah, they probably say it correctly in the game, but I'm okay with saying it incorrectly, <laughs> how I repeatedly read it. Uh, he's a shadow of his former self, enfeebled and crazed, eating compatriots like an animal it's not hard to imagine i mean you're talking to a person who says michael zaki instead of miyazaki <laughs> you know what i'm saying um it's not hard to imagine how world influenced the audience into seeing her as an aggressor it spurred a fan discussion about how a transformation was cheating and otherwise fair fight it is a fucking hard fight the fact that radin was master of gravity magic also cut off her arm is not important i agree in order to shed light on Melania's journey, players must pursue a quest to save a young woman who's afflicted by rot, one who looks eerily like her. The story reveals it. Okay, what's the point of this? Narrative choices swiftly undercut her initially provocative design. All roads in FromSoft game lead to back to women being mothers, even terrifying sword maidens. Oh, I see the point. Um, all roads in some FromSoft games lead back to women being mothers. I don't think that's true. I don't think that's true. 
but I would have to come up with like examples. That is does happen. That is consistent. That is definitely a common occurrence, which I think is also just a common occurrence across video games in general. I think sometimes like writers' rooms that are full of men have trouble uh, thinking of a point of relation uh, to women other than motherhood, and it's definitely a strong vice and a thing that women deal with and think about a lot. So it's not like it shouldn't be discussed. Um, but do I think it's all of them? Probably not. These narrative choices swiftly undercut her initial provocative design, cheapening their impact. What's the scariest thing a team of designers could dream up? A distant warrior woman who doesn't care about them, slowly succumbing to a rot that infected her from birth. While Melania's character writing had grown slightly beyond the way women were written in earlier FromSoft games, her arc is still confined by the same laws. Again, interesting. What could have been a place for mechanical and narrative evolution backslides into being merely a means to an end within a video game. Women continue to populate the path as either passive help meets or predictable obstacles, which the fan base is all too happy to step over. Here's the thing that makes me like very strongly disagree with this. Again, I'm not mad that this article exists in the way a lot of other people are. I'm cool with it. I don't agree with it. Um, I think Melania is cool. And I think that maybe I fit in the camp of like, feminism that thinks Bayonetta is fucking awesome. I think that she's empowering. And I feel the same way about Millennia. And that I think having the boss in that game that I consider to be the hottest be a beautiful feminine woman, um, I think is fucking cool. I think it's a lot cooler than a lot of media that has women have to appear as men. Like, that, there, there's this thing sometimes where the only way that you can be viewed as a very strong, powerful woman is if you are completely asexual or, or at least masculine. Like, you're wearing, you know, a full set of armor and you know, standing the way the dudes stand and, you know, you've got a boyish haircut or whatever. Um, not saying that I don't think there's a place for that, but I think having women be allowed to be feminine and also be strong is fucking awesome instead of making it always masculinized, but I don't know if that's an unpopular take. I just feel like sometimes we get media that's like, if you look feminine and you dress feminine, bad. Don't do that. And as somebody who struggles with that all the time, like my whole life I've been like, I'm aware that I am physically very feminine and I don't feel comfortable expressing it because people have accused me of using it to do things when it's just how I look. And I've been trying to work past that and get over it and be more comfortable with having a very feminine appearance. It's, it can kind of suck sometimes to see so much media be like, nope, keep dressing like a dude or you're not a cool woman. I don't know. I feel a little bit ousted by kind of some recent expressions of strong femininity in that um, a lot of them just uh, masculine. Um, like you, you, this idea that you can't be a, a sexy woman and also be strong and cool. I don't like it. I'm not a huge fan. I'm not a huge fan. Uh, but maybe that's just the camp that I sit in. Um, and I think Melania is cool as fuck. <laughs> like, I think she's awesome. I love that. I love that the hardest boss in the game is a cool feminine woman, personally. Um, well, from soft games are often intriguing meditations on the corrupting influence of power, the inevitability of death, and the lurking dread of cosmic horror. The women in them feel stunted. Melania is a half-grown idea clipped back too short. What could have been left on the floor of the hallow tree, cocooned in petals, and deeply, deeply dreaming of revenge. 27 most inappropriate pause scenes in movies. <laughs> you can do anything you want in this game. Raid Shadow Legends. <laughs> so, in conclusion, I think I disagree with the article. I think it raises some things that I don't completely disagree with. Um, and I think there are some things in it that are interesting. Do I think it's reaching? Not necessarily. I think it is just an alternate perspective. And even if I disagree with it, I think this kind of suggestion that it somehow hurts video games, people are like, oh, fuck this article, shut up. How? How does having a, um, a socio-political conversation about a game that is dealing with socio-economic and political themes hurt the industry, even if we don't agree with the take? You know? I don't know. That's how I feel about it. 
at at least. <laughs> anyway, Jamie Lee Curtis. <laughs> Did I see the streamer that beat Elden Ring on PS5 controller and dance pad at the same time? I did, yes. How fucking cool is that? I haven't actually watched it. I just saw the articles about it. I can't even imagine. Wild. I think the title of it being a catch-all is the thing. How else would you title this article, though? It's odd. Titles are really odd. I was always garbage at it. It hurts video game journalism reputation. How? How does sharing an opinion on the hardest boss probably in any video game that came out all year, who is beloved, that is serious and political, how does that hurt video game journalism? Like, what do you want? Do you want just hottest butts in games to 2022 list? Or do you want video game journalists to just rehash press releases do you want them to just shit on developers 24 7 i guess it's technically what this is doing people like uh from stuff so you're not allowed like what do you want <laughs> can't we just have a bunch of different shit isn't that what we should want out of games journalism have them write a bunch of different stuff and a bunch of different opinions and and things that are perspectives you haven't read before isn't that good even if you don't like it that's that's my stance, potential slayer. Is every other media every other medium gets such a range of takes? Why not video games too? I agree. I do not think that this article hurts games journalism. Trying to force a point of view. I agree with that. I think that like I don't agree with the point of view, and I think it needs more sources and examples to really sell anyone on anything. But I don't think it hurts journalism by saying something that like that most of us don't agree with. It's harder to do that. It's harder. Oh, thanks for the raid, book club for gamers. Book club for games. Oh, that's a cool concept. Thank you. Um, yeah, I, it's, I don't know. I think it's kind of impossible for games journalists to succeed because what the audience says that they really want, from my perspective, is for people to just yell at publishers. They want to be mad, even about things that aren't worth being mad at. They just want to yell. Um, and you can only do that so much. <laughs> and you also, when you're a journalist and you have reach, you kind of have to think about the audience you are fostering. Do you want to contribute to the general public hating game developers, often unjustly? Um, again, not that this is a positive article. Who do I think this article is targeting? It's not, I don't think it works that way. Uh, would like if opinion pieces were prefixed with opinion at the start, could help a bunch. Well, they are. They are. They almost always say opinion. It's also very clear that it's an opinion. I don't know, man. I just think we should be allowed to share opinions. I think the problem is many of these journalists seem to be nitpicking. They come across as personally looking for stuff to complain about and therefore come across as very arrogant and holier than thou. Maybe that's a fair criticism, but I think that's probably unlikely. I think really it's just a person sharing an opinion. Um, we nitpick things all the time. Everyone does. And, and nitpicking is okay. Claiming truth when you don't provide proof is a problem because you can't sway, you can sway public opinion in a malicious way. I agree with that. I think that the fact that this doesn't have more sources bothers me. Um, like mention of, oh, Elden Ring bosses are this. So like all FromSoft bosses are this. I'd be like, mm, you maybe need a source for that. But... It's not, uh, I don't think that that, that the weak references, which I would agree it does have, the references are weak, um, doesn't hurt the whole industry. It's just an individual article, you know? I think this article is great for discussing the socio-political effect and reflection on real-world socio-political issues in relation to video games, just a bad take with weak references. I tend to agree with that. <laughs> I don't think it hurts games journalism because nothing about this is journalism, it's an opinion piece. That is correct. Just like no one takes the random stupid opinion pieces in the New York Times seriously, breaking the Activision scandal stuff was journalism. Well, look, technically journalism is just anything being shared. Um, opinions technically do count as journalism. They fall under the bracket. What you're referring to is news, which is just a facet of journalism. A feature is still journalism. Um, 
I don't think this is a great example of journalism. Again, not enough sources in my opinion. But I don't think that we should immediately discount all opinion pieces is the thing. I think that there's value in reading different opinions about things um, across the board. Uh, I think the best way to consume the news is to consume it from a variety of sources, ones that you agree with and don't agree with. And I wish they would teach media literacy in schools a little bit better for things like that. Have I ever played Remember Me? I have, yeah. That game um, was... Um, had a lot of things I liked in it. Um, and then some things that I felt didn't come together so well. I think I described it in one of... Uh, speaking of games journalism, I, I still think about this a lot. One of my most apt openings to any review ever was that when you blend a bunch of really good ideas together, what you get isn't one really good idea. You kind of get like a bunch of messy shit that doesn't really taste great or looks very unappealing with a couple of really small chunks of single good ideas. And that's kind of how I felt about Remember Me. Because it was like, you had a bunch of good ideas that were almost there. And you put them all in a blender and you hit a button. And then what came out was not great with a few morsels of the good ideas still existing. Too much spinach. <laughs> that's also true, Scott. Newspapers have always been filled with opinion pieces you might not give a fuck about. This isn't a games industry thing. I agree with that too, definitely. Yeah. How you feel about Cult of the Lamb? Dude, I love Cult of the Lamb. Related, thank you for contributing to the cult's totem. <laughs> they also did a similar article about Witcher 3, the complicated women of the Witcher 3. I mean, if they wrote something about the Witcher 3, a game that came out 10 years ago, and it's probably a completely different writing stuff and a completely different person writing about Elden Ring, I think that's totally fine. Do you agree that opinion pieces should have opinion in the title? No. It has opinion. It says very clearly. Opinion. Um, I think if you're asking for this article that says Elden Ring's millennia embodies from software's problems with women and you're asking for it to say opinion in the title when it's so clearly an opinion, that's kind of on you. This is clearly, objectively, an opinion. You don't need it to say opinion. You know? It's definitely an opinion. Um, that's It's very clear. Can you force people to be literate? No, but I do wish there was just a bit more teaching. A bit more learning happening. Thank you for the bits, or the cheers. Are those bits? I don't know. Thank you, Danny. <laughs> Our opinions published on site like those instead of a personal blog. Well, features are a part of journalism, so they get published on websites. I think even if you did put opinion in the title, people would still be upset about it. They wouldn't care. They'd just be like, why is this opinion here? It's, I mean, it's clear it's an opinion. It says opinion on the page. It's clearly an opinion. Thank you, Goonpea, your boy. And the title of this article cannot be mistaken for a fact. I tend to agree with that. Yes, I think it is objectively an opinion. <laughs> Every opinion piece should end with the sentence, that's like my opinion, man. <laughs> I don't disagree, man. Perhaps at the heart of the problem is many readers take opinions being forced on them instead of something to consider. Many view opinions as arguments instead of contributing to an overall discussion. I agree with that. And I do think that there is something about video games specifically where opinions are um, very dramatic. And the reason for that is something that I think is actually very cool about the games industry. That is... Because video games require you to have an active input rather than just passively consuming something, you feel like you're a part of the worlds that, that you play through, right? You say, I did this, not protagonist name did this. You said, oh, when this happened at this boss fight, this is what I did, right? So you feel a lot more involved it is a, in a very active hobby um, compared to other forms of entertainment medium. And that makes people very passionate. And I think that that's fucking awesome. I think that the passion that comes from... Uh, video game fans who sometimes even get called toxic for things that I would consider to be passion 
is uh, just proof that that the medium is very, 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 very good at what it does um, and is doing things that other mediums cannot and is a strength of um, video games. That's not to say there isn't toxicity. I just think sometimes toxicity is passion and, and people get misplaced. So I think that that's a, like a credit to video games that people are able to be so passionate about their opinions. The however part <laughs> is that I feel like when you can get past that passionate ownership barrier, the next level that would show even more respect for the medium is being willing to have human intelligent discussions about articles like this one, rather than immediately saying, no, fuck that, fuck you, your website's trash, fuck all games journals. Like, if you can take the passion to a more constructive place where we can have interesting conversations and actually take the medium seriously and actually acknowledge socio-political, socio-economic themes that course through the industry and stop pretending the video games aren't political, uh, I feel like that helps with the passionate people to take the industry more seriously or treat it with a um, more mature approach. And don't get rid of the passionate part. Keep the passion. Keep the fire. Be passionate about video games. They're doing a very good job of, of having you feel that way, um, but know how to be constructive about it. Oh my gosh. Hello. Hi. Come here, what'd you do? What you doing, bud? Oh, hello. Little fluff machine. What's going on here? <laughs> it's Banjo. Hi, bud. You came in and went straight for a toy. Nice one. It's Banjo. What's that? Sure. Yeah. Can you say hi? You want to say hi? Are you going to ignore me? Are you going to ignore me? Little banjo. What's you doing? What a good dog. What a good dog. What a good dog. Anyway, that's a great ending to uh, my rant there. <laughs> Look how cute he is. <laughs> He's perfect. What you doing? Hey, Banjo, what you doing? He honestly was just like, bitch, I know there's a toy in this room. You've had this fucking door shut for how long? I'm coming to get it. I know there's a toy. Yeah, everybody, in case you missed it, I did start um, an Instagram for Banjo. It's really for me, because I've been posting on it in order of photos taken. It's really for me to track his progress. Like, I'm really hoping that the first photo I posted, he's so raggedy and, like, clearly looked like a shelter dog, clearly looked like a stray. Um, and then he, he's seeing the progression of, like, him going through the surgery to hopefully, at some point, him walking completely pain-free. Yeah, hang on, let me create a... Let me give you a link. Instagram.com And I will create a night bot for it. It's a little banjo. He's so cute. I missed him so much, dude. Okay, the night bot. Yeah. Banjo Kachui. I named him Banjo. Rahul gave him the Kachui pot. I reached out to ACG for a show. I don't know who ACG is. I'm sorry. Will I have a cosplay again? Yeah, probably. It's very time consuming. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. Kochikron. Have we heard about Koala Man? I have. I am friends with the showrunner. Um, ish. And I can only assume that my great nation is, um, displayed accurate. You ever get the feeling when you look at him that you want to squeeze him? Yes. You know what that is? When you get that feeling and you look at something cute and you want to squeeze it, that is you wanting to murder it. Because you, uh, overwhelmingly have... Um, the sense that it has too much power over you. You're like, it's too cute. I'm aware that I would do a lot for this thing. 
Urgh. That is literally you instinctively wanting to kill the thing that you find that cute because you, um, the survival instincts kick in and you realize that it has too much power over you. Fun human fact for you. Murder. Is Rafa okay? He's gone blank on social media. He's doing fine. Not a mental health thing. He just was like, fuck this. Not for any real reason. Yeah. Has Rahul ever been to Australia? He has. Write a story instinct to ki ki kill and eat cute things. I mean, it's the same thing, really, right? We talk about the same thing here, my friend. <laughs> yeah, don't go with your instinct on that one. In some cases, not in this case. Instinct may be staying in elsewhere. Just like my dog's hugging has no murderous intentions. It does so. You want to kill them. It's the rules. What you drinking? I am drinking AG1 by Athletic Greens. They are a sponsor, but this is not sponsored. They did not ask me to drink it on the stream. I just do drink this stuff very often. Not every day. You're supposed to. I don't drink it every day. Um, but I do drink it all the time. Did I ever get my corrected green card? Still no. Still waiting. Any minute now. Eventually. Allegedly. Um, alright. Let me be I'll be for one second. We're gonna play Forspoken. Let's finally do it. Let me um I'll need to turn off stuff and reset stuff up and pull the green screen out so this will only take like one second. Give me a minute. We do this and this. And close this and that and that. And that. Okay. Give me a sec, be right back.
It's weirdly not letting me. I wonder if I have to change a PlayStation setting or something. The Elgato says no. I'm not sure why. OBS is also unhappy with me. Things are popping off. No, it's not the HDMI thing. Oh God. So it's still streaming fine, but my OBS is frozen. That's strange. It's like I can see myself on the stream, but I can't see myself on OBS. Oh, okay, it's back. Video capture device, okay. HD 60. Hmm. Hmm. El gato. Another chat box over here. Make myself even smaller. Do 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 Maybe Employee and Reflook. Let's try one of those. Thank you, imaginary, co imaginary colors. Appreciate you. Okay. There we go. Beautiful. Very loud. Um, for those asking, this is not a press demo or anything, it's a public demo. And it is on the PlayStation 5. doing today whatever it wants I guess um, okay let me change my audio to track three track three is good yeah okay and then we will make this a little bit smaller do that maybe Keep talking. That seems fine. Just slightly less. Is the, are the audio levels okay? Too quiet or anything? Or is it just nice? Is it all right? How's the music? Hey, thanks alcoholic Irishman. Seems good. No audio from the game. What do you mean? Uh, Vonzo, well, I have already answered that in the stream. Yes, it worked. Okay, now do you hear the game? Maybe it was too low. There? How about now? Wait, the game music was there and then it cut out? Now this game audio. Okay. Done fixed it. All right. <laughs> Great. Um, I have no idea how long this is, for the record. It could be hours. It could be 20 minutes. I really don't know. Let me maybe Google that first. It feels like a thing I should probably be a little bit aware of. How long is the Forspoken demo? A demo? Um, okay, it's short. About 20 minutes. Oh, hello, Black Crystal. She said it was an hour or so. Scott said it's long. What? It, what? It, it, it. <laughs> Thank you, TJ Neck. Google said 20 minutes. Okay. 
no time limit. Okay. Yeah, so it depends if I want to speedrun it or not, I guess. Um, Alright, let me start recording. OBS is not happy with me today. Okay. Seems alright. The song's pretty sick. Am I gonna need to disable this this music for content creation purposes? Does anyone know? Let's see if they have an option for it. Oh my god. You look like you're about to murder somebody. <laughs> you look like a mixture of Dexter and Walter White. Okay. For spoken. I'm gonna get you in frame. Look at him. <laughs> What's that? Very nice work on the edge highlights there. Oh, I'm redoing the chest one, I don't want to. There you go. Not if I guess. I'm redoing that chest part. Top chest. Yeah, it won't really focus, but it's not a great webcam. Um, it looks like you haven't done the chest at all. Mm -hmm. I just haven't done that line. Oh, you mean you're redoing the edge? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's too narrow. It looks sick. Seems I've got my name on my apron. Very good, very good. It's a present from Alana. I like the glasses. Are those you? Yeah. <laughs> you got a light on them as well. Ready? Put them on. Oh my god. And then <laughs> have a peek. Oh, that's sick, dude. Uh, I haven't used them yet. I was going to try it. It's like you're not even miniature painting. It's huge. Damn. Do you think you could do it with those? My hands are really unsteady. No, you just got to secure them. You're just not securing your hands on on the surface. Yeah, let me do that. Yeah, hold that. Yeah, keep your hand there on your ne on your leg. Yeah, it's steady. This is really cool. I like it. What the headset? Yeah. Oh, okay. Shout out to Ninjon. Who recommended these? Ninjon, great YouTube channel, especially for those looking for. I like it a lot. For stuff, good recommendations. I just put the Red Cross Gaming mat on. Oh yeah. They're amazing. The new one. Mhm. Mm okay. Thank you. Appreciate that. You do look like Dexter. You look like you're about to kill somebody. Maybe I am. <gasps> Not banjo. Banjo. You fucking dead. No. Why is he wagging his tail? <laughs> he doesn't know what, you, what, what your threats mean. <laughs> you know, everybody can hear you doing that. <laughs> Nobody thinks you're cool anymore. It's a good point. Okay, what was I checking? Oh, the sound settings. I wanted to check if there's a, like a streamer mode, but it looks like there is not. Oh, let me close this. Um, can you close the door? Uh, bathroom? It'll just close an echo. Uh, either is fine. I guess your one. Uh, this is the same demo they had like a month ago, yeah. This is just the same demo. Alright. It's banging. It's banging. That's all I'm saying. Um, okay. Are you alright, bro? Badger. Badger. 
Banjo. Banjo. Drop it. Banjo. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he's so cute. Lazy. No, he's a good boy. He's just sleeping on the floor. The problem I'm having with my hair today is just these bits, the baby hairs. I guess people style them, but I never have. And they're just really curly, and I think it's probably from all the salt water in Australia. Like, they're just sort of... Who cares? All right? Who cares? Whatever. Um, all right. Hello, everyone. Who is not currently on Twitch. My stream is live on Twitch. Initially, uh, hello, YouTube. I today really wanted to play the Forspoken demo. And this is the demo that came out about a month ago, but I was in Australia and I didn't take my recording set up just so that I would have proper family time. So I'm effectively playing catch up. Um, I don't really know what to expect from this, but I have had a lot of opinions on trailers of this game. Um, very mixed. I've not loved a lot of the dialogue. I did not like the editing of the original trailer, but I also thought that the combat actually does look pretty cool. So I'm going into this, still having a lot of questions about this game. Um, I'm glad there's a demo. I want to try it. Game comes pretty soon. Comes out pretty soon. Pretty soon. This is a Square Enix game. Thank you for playing the Forspoken demo in which you can enjoy a sample of the full game. Please be aware. Okay. Your progress will be saved automatically. Do not turn off the power while the icon is on screen. And yeah, I thought the traversal looked really good as well. So um, yeah, this is a publicly available Frey demo. Holland, daydreamer, cat lover, New Yorker. On a fateful evening, her life changed drastically when she was mysteriously transported to the beautiful, treacherous land of Afia. It looks very Final Fantasy. She arrives with a magical, sentient bracelet inexplicably wrapped around her arm, then discovers she can cast powerful spells. I think and the format looks cool. To swiftly traverse the sprawling landscapes. The last remnants of Athia's populace soon look to Frey as their only hope for confronting the Tomtas, once benevolent matriarchs who now rule as maddened and evil sorceresses. She's sort of hot. Reluctant to help, but desperate to find a way back home. Frey sets off on a journey. Very strange Isekai anime world. theme. Of course. Okay, let's do it. I've not seen anybody play this um, either, despite knowing it's been out for a little while, so this is my first jump into it. Very curious how much I'm gonna like it. I couldn't tell you. Okay. Yes. What would happen if I said no? Huh. Alright, it's kind of neat. It's like, it's just a very streamlined parkour. Very Assassin's creed -y, or modern Assassin's creed -y at the very least. It looks pretty. Pretty simple. Attack magic. Use attack magic to defeat oncoming enemies. Press R2 and unleash an attack spell or hold it down to build up power before casting. Switch between various attack spells by using R1. Yeah. Now's your chance. On it. I've only oh no, I've got two, hang on. There or there. Shield shot scatter shot. Yep. You're too close for goodness sake. Who's talking to me? Is it the it. ribbon? Oh, I didn't expect swearing. Okay, I don't like that one. We'll go back to that one. That's that's easy. It's sort of like um, OG Fable, Kingdoms of Amalus style. I was very clunky, obviously, but. Support magic. Support magic provides various beneficial effects. You can use it to gain tactical advantages, such as slowing or even stopping fast moving enemies, allowing you to blast them with attack spells. Press L2 to cast a support spell and L1 to open a menu that will allow you to switch between them. Um, okay. These things take time, Frey. Oh. Bro, that was sick. L2. Switch, switch is here. I wouldn't have thought that was a support spell, weirdly. Um, hang on. It's L1. I want to swap between... 
Try Let's try it. For size. This looks like a big one. No. I'm not sure why I'm not doing that. Oh, it just oh, it just took a while. Okay. Um, tendril leech. Give it a try. This'll it's a little nice. awkward to change between spells. For my next trick. And I'm not positive right. why I wasn't casting them the right way. What's this? Cool, 39 points. Um, so the these you just can't use often. Here we go. What's the thing at the top? I guess it'll probably teach me that, right? Switching between spell sets. You can use another style of magic by switching to the appropriate spell sets. Press R1 and L1 to open up spell switching menu, then select from two available styles. Incoming! Okay, that's cool. Try this for size. Got you on your toes now. I'm unsure what I'm doing wrong that's making me not uh, charge properly. I like that! And then I guess we can swap against these here. In the hole. Uh, cool. Well, what do you think? I think you've defeated several enemies. Oh, <laughs> never mind. She's a little bit too chatty. Nope, not working. Whoa. Uh. Don't use it. Damn it. <laughs> I don't know how to cancel. Okay. Uh, no, I didn't really put it together super well, but that's my fault. Probably. I, I Sometimes I'm just terrible at tutorials while doing something on Twitch as well. Yeah, she definitely talks a little bit too much, which we were worried about. Um, check objectives. Go to the central refuge in the water garden. Okay. <laughs> it was called full spoken after all. <laughs> uh, okay. So, I think what I was getting confused about was why L2 wasn't working when I expected it to. Hang on, let me wait until it's actually come back. I I'm also kind of covering it, so I should move myself over. Hang on. Maybe I should go over here. Um, so when I hit L2, still can't use it. It's long recovery. Well, let's just do this one then. So leech has to be used on myself, I think. Yeah, it just looked like these were, obviously they are passive spells, but they were so passive that to me it almost looked like um, I wasn't using them at all. And that was confusing me in combat. Might as well pocket this. I wonder if I can just attack random stuff. Is there a, like a melee that doesn't require... Seems the break hasn't taken hold no. too thoroughly here yet. I would like to try that though. This What's is that? More than enough. Thanks. That's pretty neat. In fact, you can do it on anything is cool. This looks breakable. Let's try it. No. Okay. Uh, it's a very bland world, I will say that is initially noticeable. Pretty bland. At last. Yes, very fortuitous timing, I must say. Hmm. I could take a nap. I think I have full health, but why not? Wait, am I covering something now on the bottom left as well? Shall we? Oh, I am the health. Let's okay, do hang it. on. <laughs> we'll leave it again. Let's do. Uh, let's just go up here, shall we? Smaller. I'll leave that to go right underneath. And I think that won't cover anything. All right. 
Long, long ago, the Tantas built spires of stone across Athea. The Tantas' power was so great that no sooner had they decided to build them than the spires appeared all over the land. One day, these spires, these monuments, shall save our beloved Athea, said one of the Tantas, with great anticipation in her eyes. Deep. Okay. So I think I just slept in some random person's house. Which is cool. And I probably want to go here. Uh, watchtower like Ubisoft? Um, okay. Chill. Chill. Alright. Very Ubisoft, yes. Oh, that's interesting. Huh. I like this. This is, a, this is a neat idea. I guess we probably want to go to that one? No? Photo spot, that's interesting too. Let's look at the Fountain of Blessing. We're just gonna go on the bridge. That's what I think we're gonna do. Feels like a reskin Assassin's Creed. Definitely a lot more similar to Assassin's Creed than I think I was even expecting for some reason. Are they all bad? So what, how, do, how do I use this correctly? Like, like it has to like cover you on the ground or something? Um, battle tutorial, evasion of magic parkour. You can use magic carpool to dodge... Parkour, did I say carpool? To dodge enemy attacks in battle, press circle at the right moment to take a quick step out of the way. You can also hold down L and circle while performing magic parkour to evade automatically. Okay. Yeah, see, I'm not fully sure what that did. You need to be a little more patient. You done it just, the it just controls a bit weird. Um, okay, let's do this one. Okay. And then change this one to, to bind. Because in theory, bind will just... That makes I more sense to me. No shit. I really want to be able to hit somebody with like a sword or something. Do you know what I mean? Uh, hang on, there was a shield in here as well, wasn't there? Let's do... No, no, that's wrong. Um... I think there was a shield spell somewhere, but, uh... It's this, and then that one. Oops. This one, this one. And then, charge. Where is it? I don't remember. I swear there was one, but I lost it. I like this magic set a lot more than the other one. That's for sure. Okay, then. Where is the shield? I don't know. I swear it was there. And now I've lost it. My bad. Okay. Mm, I don't know. I still feel like I'm very clunky. But we'll figure it out. I like the OST too. I'm liking the music a lot, yeah. Um, let's do the charge. Give it a try. That's cool. How do I use the attack that's on the top? That's it. I'm unsure. I also feel like this is probably a thing where you'll use the same one spell. Uh, locking on would have been nice a while ago. Okay, use R3 while an enemy is in view, and you'll see that lock on icon appears. Okay. Am I locked yet? Yeah. I mean, this is a cool looking fight. Oh, come on. oh, thank you for the raid, Bruce's Gooses, for playing the Spoken Battler. Which, um, I'm definitely just trying to get the hang of. So the thing is, I need to change this every time because it runs out of charge so fast, right? Do that. It increases my attack power. That's cool. 
The jumping in and out is fun. The way the parkour works in, in combat is fun. I like it. Okay. Fa phrase magical powers have increased. I'll give you middling, asshole. She's so much harsher than I kept expecting. <laughs> Impressive Sweet, find. a nugget. Hey, a freebie. Ah! Give an audit chain so they don't run out. Oh, that's interesting. Maybe I do need to mess with some settings. I'm gonna leave it how it is because it's the demo, you know. Take up slow down time in settings. Um, I think I probably would do that for my own playthrough, but I feel like I should be demoing the demo as as it is made. I know she's a New Yorker. <laughs> Oh my god, I want to collect everything. What have you done to me? The traversal's fun, I like it. Not certain I'm going the right way. We're just gonna go to this marker. What one might call a gaggle of troublemakers. Where? The oh, the deer? Huh? Okay. Top spell is these two together? Well, that's fun. I definitely like this sword thing. I just can't see any reason why I would ever change it. Your skills are coming along. Because I like it, like, Guess a lot. So, huh? Oh, compared to the other stuff. But, I mean. So, changing it is this. Arc slice. Rage Slice, Blast Slice. Yeah, we like Ox Slice. But maybe that's fine. Maybe I can just choose the one I want. Crucible, not a huge fan of. Yeah, I'm gonna stick with Charge. And maybe that's the idea, is that you're supposed to just have combos that you like. Like, maybe I'm not supposed this to be wildly the swapping between them all the time. Oh, that's interesting. Is somebody blinding me? Dodge rolls! If you use magic parkour while s preparing a spell, you can make an even bigger evasive maneuver than the usual quick sidestep. Prepare an attack or support spell. Hold R2 or R3, then hold R. Okay. Cool. This and then that. I don't know why I didn't expect her to swear. Why are we facing this way, lad? Oh, because that's the thing I need to get? Okay, I immediately liked the combat more than I did. Very quickly. That's cool. Um, so to finish the job, I probably need to get something ranged. For the bioids. Unless I can, um, what was it? Uh, to triangle? Can I like, can I bring myself up to him? Because that'd be cool. I can't, I don't think. Can get kind of close. Um, okay, let's, oh, let's see if I can get him anyway. Maybe the reason the swearing is surprising me is that like, I felt like some of the trailers were kind of family friendly. I don't know. <laughs> like it just didn't uh, come across to me as something that would have any swearing. Um, okay, hang on. I need to change this to this, probably. Okay. To have more range, which didn't really... Did I not take it? Okay, maybe I did with Blast Slice. Now I did, okay. Did she not throw that? There we go. It just took a while to change, maybe? Damn. I do like that. Why not? Leave me alone. Is it using both of them? Why am I? S I didn't. 
I'm swap. Oh, I swap between them when I'm when I've thrown one of them, and it's just doing that automatically. Okay, got it. Nope. I have to hold it down, maybe. Nope, not working. I think that's it. I have to hold it down. Mm. Jerk. I'm also, like, not good with the lock-on. It's not something that I am succeeding at very well for some reason. There we go. Worked that time. Alright, we've done it. It's a little uh, finicky, but again, could be on me. I'm always really bad at tutorials while streaming. Um, it happens. Because my brain is doing too many things at once. We got here. Ooh. A cloak. All right. Um, I guess I'll take the one that gives me the health. I'll do that one. Well, I it's pretty. Never. Yet another remarkable find. Oh, yeah. The treasure seeker strikes again. Okay. Uh, where do we go from here? This way? You want me to go this way, I guess? We found the combat a bit clunky overall. That's comforting. Don't go getting all maudlin, will you? What the fuck is maudlin? Not me, anyway. Good. <laughs> Didn't like this that line. Did you find something? I'm just picking up some roses for some reason, my guy. Just just getting some flowers, you know. Oh yeah, there is teleport. Okay, hang on. Uh, how do I do that? Here maybe? Map. We are going. There? Can I... Teleport there? Fast travel destination list. No, just the one I've been to. So did I just run away from it? Is that what happened? Well, let's go back here. And then go to the... Uh, to the why right? Are we here, again? here? Please tell me you're joking. Ooh, is there fall damage? Let's find out. Only one way to find out! Right. It's fine. Tolerable. It clicked for me when I realized I need to keep holding circle and moving and using abilities while in the air. Okay, noted. Maybe I need to be a little bit more yep, mobile. No sweat. I think this does look really nice. Little crocodilios. Look, water. <laughs> I mean, she's not wrong. <laughs> Technically, yeah. This is very Assassin's creed -y. Climb even higher with multiple leaps in quick succession. Okay. Cool. Objective three, complete. Let me just pick up some more flowers. Don't know what they're for yet, but I'll pick them up. I mean, this is quite a pretty vista. I like the scale. And I think I like the camera um, placement too. I can kind of be picky about how close over the shoulder may. Thank you, show us. Um, okay, let's go back up this way. Shall we? I guess if they give you fast travel from the jump 
you should assume it's a pretty big world. And I am aware that I could fast travel, but you know, I'm cool with with the traversal for now. I get that eventually you'd probably not want to do it anymore, but I'm cool. Let's try. So, someone in the chat said that I should try and hold down circle at all times, but then I can't control the camera. I'd say you're becoming reasonably um. deadly, yes. So that is a little bit tough. It's- I'm already- it's already starting to feel better. Just took a little bit of learning. Hey, get out of here. Get out of- okay, well, this is happening. <laughs> Stupid bird! I took so much damage from that bird, dude. <laughs> okay. Cool. more of a challenge. I'm very glad to hear it. I'm not sure what I'm running towards, but... Well, this doesn't look good. You know yes, what I will say? The break right now? Someone in chat might have said this. Clear it away with your um, Give it a try. Thus far, the world kind of does remind me of Sonic Frontiers. And <laughs> that's not a take I expected to have. Uh, okay. I need to break this. Is that working? Yeah. Cool. Okay. Did I do it? Is it done? Oh, there we go. Just do me a read. Okay, those are just gonna be like little upgrade stations then, I take it. Wait, what? That's me finishing the demo? No. No, I was like, what? <laughs> okay. Say that new ability was just up in know, circle. I... No, there's a limit to it, is my guess. I can't just run up forever. I don't think. No, I can't. Okay. No, sir. Um, let me take a look at the map. Cause there is some other stuff that I can do. I just don't know that I'm going to find it all super interesting. Scout the area. Let me zoom out. And this is a pretty big slice of map, to be honest. Especially for a demo. This is probably going to be a massive game. Defeat the boss within the time limit. Mutant. Let's go do this one. Assuming I have not already done it. Fast travel destination list. It's still just these two. All right, so let's go here. That away. Cause I'm right by it. Away. Ooh, how do I get up though? Oh. Other side of the ridge, maybe? Probably. Ah. You just fear that it's gonna be empty. Yeah. Ah. Ah. Be on your nah, they're fine. Yeah, yeah. Stay frosty. Got it. Perform cup scan. Of course. Of course, yeah. 
This should be easy enough. That is that true of every battle. I don't even know what I'm fighting. Um, people? What are you? Some sort of orc? A goblin? Oh, fuck it. Kinda guessed that already. That's not doing much. Well, do something. Oh, come on. I I do like this this um sword to spear situation we've got going on here. I'm a fan. Right, I think I left someone behind me. Okay, it's fine. Who needs him? Not you. All right, is this the boss that I have to kill within the time limit? Hey, buddy. Know that I don't want to do this. I think you look very cute. Unless I'm sort of sad about it. I don't know. Wait, what did you do? I don't know what you did. What did we just... We're not on the same page! Hello, Sir J-Double, thank you. It, this is pretty easy now. Still like a little bit awkward, but because you sort of auto dodge when you hold down circle, and when I'm just fighting one thing and I'm locked onto it, and I'm just kind of moving around it. Oh no, I am taking damage, but let's move back and then restore. What else am I supposed to do? This is gonna hurt my hands, for sure. But I think it did have some accessibility options, so maybe we'll take a look at those. It's the pressing circle is killing me already. I mean, I think the visual effects, if that's the right word, it probably is. Oh, very pretty. Even get me, come on. Oh gosh. Alright. I'm kind of a spell expert at this point. So no? I did it. Please don't and... and I would not say I enjoyed that fight. Um, okay, let's have a look at the accessibility options. I was like, I'm not going to because it's a demo. We'll just keep it how it is, but then my hand's gonna hurt, so I love automatic item gathering. Scanning, highlight my characters, spell switching menu, toggle, hold. I feel like hold makes sense. Magic toggle. Toggle seems good. Semi auto? I'm not sure about that. Yeah. Wait, isn't it that? Okay, they actually don't have something that can prevent me from... It's gotta be this one. Whatever Turn you sprint into this. Very powerful indeed. That... Maybe I didn't save them. Sprint button... Run by using L3. Run with... When magic... But it's... If I press L3, it doesn't do it. Unless that's referring to sprinting without magic pocket. Okay, I get that. That makes sense. Okay, bud. Are you eating plastic back there? You are. That's not great. He doesn't swallow it, thankfully. Um, okay. Huh. What's this? Hot take from the game slash demo and what you played. I only just started, really. And I don't have any hot takes. <laughs> still seeing how it goes um i could probably fast travel here and then end up over there we're here 
That really was miraculously fast. So far, I mean, no hot takes, but I think that it looks pretty. And... The controls are a little bit awkward, but it could just be that it has like a learning period and then it, it gets better. Um, I think the the world that is just seen in this demo, of course this is just a demo, game still in development. This isn't even necessarily a slice of the game at all. Um, is a bit boring. A little bit dull, but uh, I don't feel confident in any of those positions. And yeah, I agree. Very glad that they provide a, a demo at all. Love that. Especially for a game that like a lot of people did have strong opinions on based on some unfavorable trailers. I do think she talks too much. And she's a little bit too quippy. Yeah, what he said is not my favorite. I can basically zone out and play this though, um, but I am getting great ease, so it's not like I'm playing it well. I'm sure if you actually swap between spells and play it well, it looks very different. That was only a D, so it's not like I did well. The placement of those particular lines is just a little bit weird, right? Like, you're not joking, are you? Are you okay with Major? Um, when we were just running into combat, it's just a little bit weird. Oh gosh. Hello, little Banjo. What you doing down there? You just sniffing stuff? That's cool. He's cool looking, this this enemy. And yeah, again, based on the E grade, I imagine I'm just playing it really badly. Like I'm not playing the way I'm supposed to be playing. Thank you, the crazy breezy. Um, she's actually not talking to herself. Life on the couch. I think I saw you say that before. She's actually not talking to herself. She's talking to the cuff. So you're not hearing her inner thoughts. You're hearing her talk to someone else. It's all, I think the issue is like a lot of it's very generic dialogue as well, um, which makes perfect sense if it's like they're just really going for that with like the, the isekai. She's just supposed to be a regular old New York teen, but um, don't need to tell me twice. I don't know, something about it feels very Marvel. Again, I think I'm probably playing it really poorly. Hello, little banjo. Are you being a good dog? Are you being a good dog down here? Oh, that's it. Um. Okay. So I think I probably played it incorrectly. I was I wasn't swapping between the weapons um, or the abilities because I didn't really want to, right? But that's on me for, like, wasting that part of the demo. <laughs> it definitely wanted me to, but I didn't really like some of the others. And I probably should have been, but I didn't really want to. I think it's very pretty. I think the score is really nice. I think maybe I should just, like swap back and keep playing though. I should try some of the other Trump some of the other abilities probably because I didn't think it would end that fast. That is my bad. I wonder if I can hit continue or I have to start a new one. Continue. Right. 
so obviously I was mostly using a swap between these two. I never used this. We got this, right? No, no, no. Why didn't that? See, why didn't that? I'm unsure why that's happening. Okay, so it's because the arc slice is just the default of this. So when hold, it gives you rage slice or whatever. Um, here we've got. Look out! Oh, somebody's here. I don't mind. Keeps me on my toes. Did I screw that up? Or are they gonna help me? That's what they do. What they? Not sure. And if we do this, other spells. Okay. Yeah, I just don't like these as much. But we can swap between. That's the shield shot. Creative defensive shield while charging. Okay. Can I then use it as an attack or sword? Okay. Just breathe, will you? Um, this one. <laughs> Tendril? Not helping. Oh, come on! Sorry, right now I'm almost not paying attention to what I'm doing at all. Um, oh, okay, that's cool. Because I'm just Finish trying to come at I'm not really uh, looking at it properly. I mean, I like that a lot. But, like, <laughs> adventure. Hi, I'm going handsome. What are you doing? You want to go poop? Is that what I'm being barked at? Uh, most abilities change if you're in the air. Yeah, so how do I get in the air? Uh... Just, um, because just circle doesn't get in the air. Unless you're running over something. X isn't- X is not jump. X is jump, but do you mean just by pressing X? Because that seems odd. What does you mean like that thing? X is regular human jump. Right, yeah. X is regular human jump, which doesn't seem like it's going to change my abilities. No, it doesn't. Is it maybe this one? Like, like if I do this? No, that. How do I get airborne? Yeah, no need. Get the fuck out of here, right? Oh, it is. You have to do the parkour. So that means it's kind of limited because you can only do it like on really specific things, right? Um, and you would have to keep running away and then running back in. Is the idea? Yeah, it's probably gonna kill me. I'll be the first chance I do this. If we run away. That's not doing much. That just waited for me to land. There are better jumps you can unlock. Okay, got it. Because yeah, if right now I'm jumping and just like I just have to go back to this rock all the time. Just feels a bit strange. I don't know. Uh, but again, my grade being so low means this game probably wants you to constantly swap between moves, but because I don't like most of them, like, I'd never use the shield shot. I would straight up always use these. Seal as magic. I don't know who Seal is, but I just can't see myself wanting to use the other side, which means I'm kind of not playing it correctly. Um, magic. Do I have some upgrades available to me? Switch skill tree. Oh, I do have some stuff I can learn. Kicks enemies backwards with fiery force triggering the explosion. That's cool. How do you do it, I wonder? Cause, uh... Cause level to bubble, bubble up beneath e the enemy and simmer away for a hot minute. Summons a host of fiery soldiers to attack the enemy. That's cool. Question mark. All light in the darkness that increases the speed at which stamina recharges. Don't care. Summons the protective power of cleansing flame. Dragon drop. Or a ranged attack that strikes distant enemies and pulls them closer, switching to seal as magic. That's cool. Can't afford. Last slice level two. Uh, I can't see an extended jump in here. But, uh, switch skill tree, huh? Hmm. 
There we go. I don't mind this UI. Strikes and poisons the enemy over a wide area. Allows you to use crafting skills to increase the amount by which a necklace improves your health. Fire seeds into enemies that continue to deal damage for a short period. Is that the jump one? Where is jump? Um, is there a different skill menu? Gear? I'm not sure if there's a different skill menu. Uh, okay, gears. We could look at this too. I liked the cloak. What about necklaces? Just this one. They don't do a ton of different stuff that I'm aware of. I can feel the power coming off that thing. Yeah, I don't know. Um, again, clearly I'm not playing it the way it's intended because I'm not swapping between the skills because I don't like some of them as much as just the sword sort of combo thing I've got going on here. And I recognize that I'm supposed to apparently get more airborne, but like, people say, <laughs> people say being airborne changes controls, but like this one just doesn't even work if I'm airborne. It makes me land. Um, or I guess it's already that I, I have it. Uh, let's do the that one. I like that okay. one the most. Do I strike in the air? Where are they? Where are they at? Big alligators. Yeah, it just didn't work. Man, this is one of those ones where I feel like I'm doing things wrong because the grades are so low and my brain feels very scattered about it. Um, I guess I should have been holding R2 more, huh? That does create more combos. But yeah, I like that one anyway. Box slice, block slice. I was probably just tapping R2 too much. Could have been a big part of the puzzle. Maybe let's try that. Hold down R2. Strange that the, it, there's a tutorial and it didn't tell me any of that. No, that's just like a charge up for that one. Which is not super interesting. So yeah, I don't know. I think that the score is awesome. I think visually it's like very... The combat is visually very impressive. Um, 